Alright guys, let's get started for tonight. Here we will have two titans clashing right in our midst. We'll be watching as they try to play Heart of the Swarm just after the release of the game itself. We'll be having a Zerg versus Protoss tonight and two very worthwhile representatives they will be. Let me just get into the game as soon as it loads for everyone included. And... And they stole my thunder. So anyway, let's get into the game itself. Here we are. And he spawns as the Red Protoss. His name is Sage. And he represents Root Gaming. And his opponent is none other than the famous Dimaga. Who is currently looking for a team. So if you are a sponsor, if you want to just hire a player to join your ranks, you can just give him a call. He is awesome and tonight... He'll be just proving the point. So, anyway, like I said, Zerg versus Protoss or Protoss versus Zerg, depending on which side you're cheering for. Uh, let's see what Sage goes for. Is it a pylon? Yes, it is. So, Sage will be going for a safe to base play. Now, with Heart of the Swarm. Not the. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Right. So, uh, with Heart of the Swarm, it's not so sure that a player will go for Forge, Forge, uh, for Forge Fuzz Expand. Forge Fuzz Expand is uh, still the most popular build if you're going expansion first as a Protoss. But uh, but also, you can go just Gateway and uh, and try to defend your expansion with a Mothership Core. So, um, so yeah. Uh, the players are now just discussing the, the network uh, performance, but that's, uh, that's to be understood. We are playing on the North American server, just to be fair, for both of the players. Sage is from Korea. And uh, the Maga is from Ukraine. Now, uh, we may just try to uh, change the Battle.net server later on. But for now, we see the Maga going for a spawning pool and an expansion soon after. Sage will be, of course, blocking that ex expansion. The probe being so annoying. And oh, Sage doesn't even wait for the, the, the drone to get there. The Maga is, is trying to do this fancy play where, where, where he just circles around not to be seen. And ah yes, he saw with the Overlord, so now he will just go straight for the third. But Sage was not even waiting to see an expansion go down or, or you know, trying to be placed. He just went and placed a pylon there, very annoying. On the other side of the map we have a Forge, after all it's going to be scouted by the Maga. So Forge before expansion and uh, yeah, and right now the Maga should be pretty... He shouldn't be too much concerned. This is why the Desert players just go for the early spawning pool. In that way, they will get, uh, they will just get a lot of Zergings to destroy that pylon. And uh, you know, from now on, uh, as soon as the Maga gets rid of that pylon, we'll be able to see what sort of attack he will be opting in. The the very important indicator for now is that he doesn't have a single gas. And if you don't have any gases, then of course. You know, your opponent can make the judgement call that you will not be taking very soon and uh, and thus you'll be very safe and also your speedlings will not be speedlings, they will just be average slowlings and that's not too cool to have, probably you're not going to lay any aggression with that although yesterday we saw Paranoid uh, with a bunch of slowlings just ripping apart the expansion of his opponent, Kerr, because you know, Kurt just, just missed a timing on the cannon and like 8 Zerglings got into the expansion, that was so crazy. And now Sage placing this gateway and Cybernetic score very standard, let's see what the gases are. We have two gases and uh, and still still no... There is no clear indicator by now what sort of a build will be Sage going for. Now if he if he starts a very early plus one that will be of course an all-in but uh, but before that I believe he will go just uh, for the cybernetic score and uh, and the warp gate deck. The Maga with three bases the game is pretty standard and yes oh yes we have we will be having an all-in guys we have a very quick uh, ground upgrade uh, the weapon upgrade for the Protoss and the uh, cybernetic score right now just trying to figure out how to make the gateways forge units at a distance uh, and uh, and that says a lot if you're a zerg and if you're scouting the first thing that you want to scout is is this forge if the forge is not working if the forge is unemployed that means that there will be no shenanigans early in the game if that forge starts working so quickly 
then of course that upgrade will be extremely important for the Protoss player and you can just get an idea of what's going on. So will we see some Blink Stalker play? Probably. Maybe just an 8 gate push? Why not? I mean, you know, everything is an option right now. Just checking what the Maga is doing so far. So, um, he's just droning up. So if we check the, the drone count, of course he's ahead. But uh, for now he's just droning up and gathering gas. Uh, for what? I think he's gathering gas for the lair deck. And uh, he'll be trying to stabilize the game and get maximum saturation before he goes for any any tech. And, and you know, this is, uh, this is more or less the safety that he just feels he can afford. He didn't get a very cl clear read on what's going on. He just has this overload and sees that there, there are no gases here. But no gases at this location doesn't me do not mean that there will be nothing that goes on. Uh-uh-uh. No gases just means that there will be no heavy tech play, uh, which is not to say that there will be not an... Yeah, so how many gates we have? It's a, it's a total of six gates. And to go nicely alongside with that, we will have... We don't know yet. So a six gate with... With one one. That, that's an interesting... Wow! This is actually quite interesting, I haven't seen that in a while. Oh, and the stalker just got caught by this huge mass of zerglings, not too good for Sage. He didn't, uh, he just didn't know that this will be coming and uh, he didn't scout ahead and didn't move, uh, move on and, uh, and right now he is in some deep trouble. He will have Zealot with plus one plus one, which is always awesome, and he goes straight for a Robo Bay. So this is sort of an aggression. It's not an all-in, guys. So it is a very quick aggression, and the Sage's idea behind this is, okay, I just hope I will be able to take down this third, or at least deal some very considerable damage before I go down. And if that happens, then, then my aggression has just paid for itself. And the Maga has to retreat from here, Sage. Oh, Sage has to be careful. You know, you need to be careful about where you position yourselves. If they get too spread around, then what can easily happen? You'll get overrun with some roaches. But the problem is, there are no roaches for now. The only thing that the Maga has to defend is are just Zergings and Workers and Queens. Very good job. He's doing an extremely good job of keeping the Queens alive, but then the Workers surround the Zealots. <sighs> But it is too late, this expansion is already down and the Queens engage in one-on-one -on -one combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Zelos and they just have more experience on that front. And, uh, and surprisingly, the Maga keeping all of his Queens alive and except losing this third, he didn't suffer too many losses, not to mention all the Zerglings he had to produce instead of, uh, instead of drones. Because this, this is what happens to a Zerg, if, um, if you get attacked early on and... Uh, and you know, you just you are just forced to make too much of an army. Uh, you are not able to make drones, and thus your economy will be hurt. But behind that, the Maga feels quite certain that he can afford going a hatchery. So yeah, this is exactly what he goes. And Sage continuing this aggression. Not sure this was a great idea. Uh, he delayed putting down this expansion, but besides that, he just wasted a bunch of zealots. Um, not really sure why, but then, hey, it's Sage. Sage most likely has some sort of a plan. He is well known for very innovative plays, so um, so I'm just curious what he is showing. So right now he's doing a transition into a Sentry Immortal play, and that's that's very that's that's really awesome. And just after that we will have a Dark Shrine. Nowadays, where is that Dark Shrine? Come on, it must be somewhere here. Where? Ah, here it is. Yeah, so a Dark Shrine. Nowadays, in Heart of the Swarm, Dark Shrine just costs less mineral, and thus, uh, Dark Shrine is more affordable. You can more easily get uh, get it earlier in the game, and you know it's it's awesome to have some Dark Tempers. Now, Sage moving out with this push against pure Zerglings, Immortal, and a lot of Sentries is just enough. Uh, it's it's probably everything that you need, and uh, and the Mothership Core, the Mothership Core will be helping this a lot. Okie dokie, the Maga preparing himself, but he doesn't have any spine crawlers. I would say that he needs a wall of spine crawlers by now. Oh, 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 oh. The Maga notices it and he knows, okay, I don't want my Zerglings to be caught in force fields. I want to stay somewhere here safe. And he abandons the ship, this expansion now. 
is just uh, is just let out and sage planning ahead two steps at a time is going for plus two attack level uh, will he go for blink also uh, i'm i'm sure he'll do it soon but for now he's spending all the gas to get archons archons plus immortal sentry and zealots that's a huge death ball and uh, and on on the other side of the map we already have the maga that switched to uh, switch to uh, to the spire and he's going hive now so uh, of course he'll be doing um brutalot but i'm not sure that he will get to brutalot the blue bah! again my brain stop trolling me brutalot level uh you it's it's difficult if you have a bunch of archons inside your own freaking base getting to brutalot quite a challenge guys quite a challenge even if we use the skill of diplomacy oh these bennings have nearly connected with the sentries a perfect force field just in the right moment even though sage is suffering some heavy losses but the same can be said about the maga and oh the maga is now in full retreat losing the bending nest and he will also lose the infestation pit everything is being targeted down by sage and he is about to win the game number one guys Game number one will go straight for to, in Sage's pocket, and it, it just seems such a solid play from him. He, he was extremely aggressive with the plus one, plus one upgrades, but eventually that aggression paid back so much that uh, he he just won the game. So, uh, so anyway, chaps, um, I just wanted to remind you that uh, today we'll be having another beautiful giveaway. Uh, if you're watching this live, at the end of the show match, we'll be giving out a free Heart of the Swarm copy. So once the players are done with playing, uh, we'll be giving out a Heart of the Swarm copy especially for you. That's it. No strings attached. You just need to follow us on Twitch TV and, uh, and stay here. And also, by the way, once you are picked, you need to reply on the chat that, uh, you know, yes, I'm a live person. I'm alive. And once you do that, it's, uh, it's cool. So we'll be going into a very quick break and, uh, and just let the players host the next map. I'll be back with you soon. My name is Yeglet and I hope you enjoy the show.
How do you do the everyone? We are starting with the game number two. The game number two will, uh, well, we don't know who will it go in favor of, but so far I can tell you one thing. Here, spawning in the bottom left corner of the Kespa Neo Planet S, his name is Dimaga. And his relentless opponent that, that just wages at the bank of perfection, he is Sage from Root Gaming. Sage is uh, is a player that we have known to be very perfectionist. So it, it's it's not just he plays fast. Oh no, it's more complicated than that. Sage is playing very fa both very fast and very precisely. He is very innovative with, with his builds just because he practices them a lot, and he just keeps inventing new ones. So uh, so this is why it's so awesome to watch him play. Now when it comes to Dimaga, he's just you know one of the older bros of esports and uh, and just to mention he has a very beautiful wife uh, and he has posted some pictures of their wedding trip uh, recently. So anyway, um, Dimaga uh, except having a beautiful wife, he also is one of the most renowned European players and uh, and you know, I, I just like to see how he manages to deal with Sage. Right now, Sage is uh, a very annoying player to play against in Heart of the Swarm, just because he is so well prepared. And I hear that Krota is with me. Hello, hello, how are you? Oh, I'm even better than yesterday, my friend, even better. All right, so are you in game right now? I just got back to my computer. Yeah, um, I'm already in the game. It unfortunately it started like two minutes ago, so uh, I would just carry on and cast this and call you for the next one. Or would you like to cast from the stream? How would you like to? Do uh, this? No, uh, I won't cast from the stream. But if you want to ask me questions, I can probably visualize a good <laughs> amount of Starcraft in my brain right now. So, so what do you think about what Sage is doing right now? <laughs> Well, I'll need a little bit more of a leeway than that. Come on, you're 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 throwing me in the deep end there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it, <laughs> it was a bad joke in the first place. So anyway, um, so Sage right now is going for a Forge, Fast Expand, and a Gateway. Uh, so a very standard Wings of Liberty play. It's all being scouted by Dimaga, who is going for just some LE uh, LE expansion, but with no gas. So again. The Maga will not have the extra early speed on his Urgings. Alright, and what map is this? It, it sounds like Saimaga's going for a really, really economic game. Should probably be setting up a third base yeah. sometime soon. This is Kespanio Planet S, so, uh, you know, getting the third base on this, I would say it's rather difficult to defend it. But, uh, but the Maga is still going for that style of play, he's just now planting the third base. So, um... What do you think? Um, I, I think it's I think it's going to be your standard three base versus two. We'll see if Daimago perhaps he tries to be a little bit aggressive off of three bases. Perhaps uh -huh. Roaches. He doesn't. He should probably be getting this gas sometime around now. You Zerg can't go gasless that long, um, just because you need it for your Zerging speed. You need it for control. Um, yeah. No no race can really go gasless for that long. Yeah, the, there is no possibility. After you take the third expansion, you want to get as much gas as possible very soon because you have been, uh, well, you have been gas hungry for so long. And the Maga just takes the extractor in the main, but surprisingly only one. So probably uh, I'm betting that he'll be trying to drone up, establish a maximum economy before he makes any, any tech choices. And he'll be just gathering the minimum of gas to get the speed upgrade on the Zerglings. And after that, uh, just to have for lair before he starts gathering gas from all other bases. Yeah, that, that's a really, really smart call here. Um, taking a look at what Sage is doing. Sage is just, I think he's just going to be going on one gateway for quite a while. And I'm still looking and seeing what kind of tech he's what his tech choice is going to be, and that's really going to dictate, every, dictate everything. I don't see any good Overlord scouting from Daimaga. Perhaps he'll suicide an Overlord a little bit later, but right now both players, uh, Sage is keeping Daimaga in the dark, and Daimaga is just hoping that his economic advantage will carry him through. Now, Sage is doing something either bri brilliant or stupid right now, because he went for a plus one upgrade for weapons, and also he went, he, he goes for Starport in the background and also to add on top of that, 
he doesn't take the extra gases at the natural. So this overlord being here, he's just sipping his cup of coffee and thinking, ah, so he will not be taking so soon. This will not be an all-in. But in fact, in the background, we seem to have a start of some weird all-in part of the swarm inish that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, um, so far the Mothership Core is coming in, we see three additional gateways, Stargate's coming online, we'll see what's being trained out of there, is it going to be a Void Ray or an Oracle, is it going to be Harassment, we still don't know, and and Demaga, he should have seen the third gas being taken, and is he going to over drone, or is he going to produce just the right amount of units, that's going to be critical and key. Yeah, and oh, Sage is going for the unit I love. I think you know from all the units I would I would have to choose uh, for the for the best unit in Harvest Swarm it would be either Viper or Oracle. Oracle is so freakishly it not, perhaps not strong but so good in games and it changes so much for the Protoss having a harassment unit. Uh, even though it has hit its weaknesses, it's not a, an extremely strong harassment unit. It still adds a lot to the juice that we call the Protoss. Yeah, it has so much utility. It, it's able to uh, harass, and then after the harassment phase, it has the ability to act as a revealer, and it's just so, so strong for scouting as we see an Overlord now trying to suicide oh. its way in. And oh, what's going to be happening here? Maga, oh, Dimaga, it, it, he is having trouble at his first because there is a Zealot run by. And though th this is so smart by Sedge, he, he has waited with the Oracle, has done the Zealot run by to take down the Spore Crawler, and right now is very comfortable to go with the air attack to activate all his. How is it called? The Pulsar Beam, I think. And, uh, and eventually, this deals a ton of damage, and this expansion perhaps will not go down, but it has been abandoned for so long that all the mining cost, the mining time are added, it's, it's just, oh, so bad for the MAGA right now. Yeah, so, so bad right now. We're gonna see, perhaps, no, I thought I saw a queen coming out of that hatchery. It may have been cancelled. No, the um, queen and, came out. And oh, it's, the queen came out. Oh, and the mothership core, it's, oh, yeah, oh my god. It just barely escaped with 13 hit points and, and used the time warp ability to, to slow down the queen and the zealots are still picking at this expansion. Wow, Sage is just showing us the new Protoss metagame. He's showing us, okay guys, this is how you can harass in Hardwell Swarm. First game was some sort of a weird 1-1, one, one, uh, plus 1-1 one, one push uh, with, with only 6 gateways and it actually worked extremely well. And now he's showing us a combination of Zealot plus Oracle play. So awesome. Yeah, so awesome. If you guys notice, it's only Zealots. All the gas is going to air the plus one upgrades, making those Zealots so strong against those Zerglings in the early portion. And now Sage has a follow-up of Phoenixes. Is it going to work against these Queens? Oh, one Queen just got picked up, but <laughs> not too much happened to it besides that. It was, uh, it was healed, I believe. I, I think I saw a, a transfusion there. And there are some sentries now, so this is becoming... Oh, and Sage so ballsy, just taking the middle expansion with the gold minerals right away. Yeah, it's almost one of those things where I'm going to hide in plain sight. No one really likes to go across the center all too much unless you're a flying unit. And, and with that, if Sage is able to hold that expansion so for, say, even four to five minutes while it's mining, it's going to pay for itself. He's going to have a forward position, and he's just going to be able to do a lot of things against the Mago. Yeah, and, uh, well, the Phoenixes are being extremely annoying right now. They can't do in any real damage, like destroy the hatchery, but every queen, every worker, every overlord is just a slight hindrance for our friend Demaga, and I'm quite sure that he doesn't enjoy that at, as, at all, and he just has to stay put. Oh, this queen was slightly out of the position next to the Spore Crawler, and it will go down its carapace, just spreading on the ground like a, like a killed fly. Yeah, bad news there. Um, a quick question for you, are you guys on EU right now, or NA? This is NA. We're playing on NA. So we'll be playing okay. in your neighborhood nowadays. Alright, perfect. Alright, now let's see what do we have here. The Maga still staying alive, although staying alive is probably the most we can say about the Maga right now. He's, he's, 
he's just losing at all fronts, but then at the same time he's just massing out Zerglings. This is what we, I think, discussed yesterday, uh, where you face too much air, you may just want to consider go Zerglings or just go Roaches, because all those units, you know, the air will not keep up with destroying them and they are so cheap to produce. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those things that, in terms of cost effectiveness, Zerglings are extremely cost effective. Uh, also, Roaches, the Phoenixes are not going to be able to do that much harassment. And at some point, Amaga may try to uh, do some sort of move, and it looks like Ultralis is going to be his tech choice. Oh, well. Ah, this is something that the Maga has been playing against Mana the other day. When they were playing in a show match for us, the Maga went for exactly the same style, so, you know, it, it worked out kind of different, but uh, but it, it eventually came down to the same thing. Right now, the Maga is going, of course, for, for some nice upgrades, and besides that, he will just have a huge swarm of Zerglings, and on top of that, some Ultras to crash down on the force fields. So, any sentries, force fields, I'm sorry, my good friend, you'll be useless. Yeah, that's a great, great call. A lot of people often forget that massive units can break force fields. And you, you often remember in terms of, you know, Protoss versus Protoss, Colossi. But in terms of Ultralists and, and in terms of Thors, Thors just aren't fast enough. And Ultralists um, got a major upgrade, so it is going to be very effective, especially against the Zealots we're going to be seeing here. Um, it's just going to be a matter of if Sage's gold expansion in the center is spotted. Do you know if Daimaga has gotten wind of this yet? Uh, yes, he had just barely when he was going with an Overseer, but he also realizes that there is not too much he can do about it right now, because he is himself in a very tough spot. Yeah, all a Zerg player can really do is, you know what, I'm going to try to expand away from my opponent, and you see him taking the top left, yeah. hoping that it will work. Um, Void Rays, very, very good call coming in from Sage as those Void Rays with oh. the uh, Prismatic Alignment should be able to deal a lot of damage to um, those Ultralists if the Ultralists do not have their full armor. Yeah, you're exactly right. Void Rays are just... Well, they probably rip Ultras apart as soon as they start activating the... How is it called? Enhanced... Prismatic Realignment, sorry. Uh, I, I keep forgetting the new Heart of the Swarm names for abilities. Anyway, a Queen game getting nearly picked here. Will it get to pick it again? Oh, you're so heavy! There you go. You need to do some heavy lifting, my friend. And uh, and another Queen may go down? No, but the Phoenixes are now scared because there's just whole a whole gang of Queens. That's not too good to deal with. And Sage is even trying to secure himself the second gold base. That would be a disaster for the Maga if that happens. Yeah, you, you start talking about efficiency of the workers. If you bring up the, the worker tab, even though um, Daimaga may be slightly ahead, I'm just guessing at this point, um, the, because of Sage's uh, gold minerals, he's actually mining much more efficiently and off of the same number of bases and establishing that third there. I believe Daimaga is going to be pushing out soon. He has oh, the yes. Queens, he has the Ultralists, it's a perfect combination between gasless and gas intensive units with those oh, Zerglings as well. Revelation. There was revelation called on the Queens by the Oracle. This is so such a useful ability that players just don't use yet. So so often this little triangle that's floating above the heads of the Queens, this is revealed and it gives uh, I think vision, a free radius vision uh, around all these units that have been affected by it for a minute. So right now Sage knows exactly where the Maga is and the Queen's being on the front, this is not a good idea. The Ultras are in the background, will they go all in yet? No? Oh, this is... The Maga just wasn't paying attention to this spot right now and uh, the Ultras go on front and they just get ripped apart. The Zergings didn't even participate in this battle and the queens they are trying to heal themselves but this is not enough so many storms go down and you know most of the protoss units have been hurt but they are still alive and this is not that uh, this is not something that could be said about the maga's army yeah sage actually positioned himself very well or daimaga was just asleep at the wheel didn't um, position his ultralist correctly and that was the problem there queens in the front Ultralist behind that, Zerglings behind that, oh, and you're not going to deal a lot of damage. He tries, he tries to salvage this situation, but then, oh, the Archons are just too much firepower for those pool Zerglings. I mean, two Archons are just barely at 5% health, and the Maga GG's because this is not something he can go back from. 
Yeah, very good game. And if you could text or uh, message me your real friend ID so I can join off of you right now, that'd be great. And we can. Sure. And I don't have to watch the stream anymore, even though I do like to see your lovely face. <laughs> My face is just overrated. <laughs> Ah, you can remove the N from the end. I just my fingers slipped. All right, let's. So we are now friends officially on both continents. I welcomed you to Europe. You welcomed me to America and we will just make an announcement that there will be no planting of a flag. So I will not say I claim this land in the name of Her Majesty and you will not plant an American flag near my house and we'll be just fine. It will we'll be, we'll be just fine. Ugh. Oh, I just found out that Blizzard actually set me up with one of those featured groups. So I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. You have a featured group? Uh, it needs to get more people before I'm officially featured. Oh, wait, what just happened? Did I close the game? This new battle net is confusing me. Oh, it's confusing everyone, the, the professional players included. So anyway, guys, I wanted to remind you in the meanwhile, as the game is being hosted, that there is this huge Heart of the Swarm giveaway we do. After the after each show match that we broadcast, we just give away one free Heart of the Swarm copy. We already gave out six of them, so we're just going crazy and throwing them left and right at you. Um, the only thing you need to do is to follow us on Twitch, simple enough, and at the end of the stream I will pick one random person from the chat and, uh, you know, there's a, I have some some program that picks one person for me so that there is no uh, chance of me cheating anyone and uh, if that person confirms hey i'm alive i'm here i'm watching then uh, that person will get a hard of a small copy simple enough simple as it is uh, we'll be doing that after this show match after the next show match where we'll be having nurture versus cast and oh my god such good games so many Heart of the Swarm copies. And even if you don't get lucky, I have a word of comfort for you. Here in the upper left corner, you have um, a list of links. If you go there and follow me at, uh, at Twitch, at YouTube, at Twitter, at Facebook, if you get all the follows, you increase your odds because at the end of the Lunch Week Madness, we'll be doing one additional drawing for each of the social media. So you even increase your chances. Nothing to add, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, let us just host the game and we'll be back very shortly.
Alright, and the game is loading, so um, this is going to be played on GSL Whirlwind, a map that we haven't seen yet in our show matches. Um, so uh, let's introduce the player uh, players and then I would like to ask you for some thoughts regarding this map. Here spawning in the left top corner we have the Maga. Meanwhile on the top right hand side of the map we do have Root Sage spawning as the red Protoss. Alright, so uh, what do you think about the map? I mean, I don't have too many opportunities to ask other casters what they think about maps, so... Um... Well, I, I think this map is one of those, one of the larger maps that are out there. There's a lot of space to maneuver. Um, Zergling run by, Zergling flanks are very, very impressive, very powerful here. And it's and taking of the third base is one of those where if you're a Zerg, you want to expand away from your opponent. And if you're Protoss or Terran, against Zerg, you generally want to expand towards them. So the spawning locations here for Sage, um, we should be seeing Sage try and take this, what I'll call the center one o'clock or two o'clock expansion. And we'll see if we get into the standard three bases versus two and how this game unfolds. What do you think? Yeah, um, you know, the fun addition to this map is exactly what you said. Not only you have the natural, you have the optional third base that uh, that is rather close to you, but you have this third that is just further away from, you know, from your opponent. It, it, and it's just at every side of the map, like at the every, every side wall of the map, if we think about this as a box. So anyway, uh, Sage right now going for a gasless play, I believe. Uh, so this will not be a 4G, this will not be a one base all-in, I believe. Uh, he is just wanting to expand behind that. And the, you know how it works, guys, is you will just go for a mothership core after that. You will get, you will get late gas and you will just wall off your main and, uh, and you will try to defend the Nexus with what you have. But then having the mothership core is just enough to transition into two base play without going for Schwaz expand. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what the follow-up play here is here. Still no gas, or just taking his gas right now. Um, no forge fast expand, and I, I like the choice here to not go for a forge fast expand, just because the Nexus and that Pulsar Cannon covers so much of that front door. Trying to do any sort of run by, Zerglings will get torn apart, and then if if, you know, Sage wants to be a little bit cute, he can place down his buildings in a funky way where the Zerglings have to run through a little bit of a maze, like rats through a maze, and then there's a giant laser just slicing them yeah. as they're trying to get by. So um, I, I think we, we should see a bit of a macro game here, unless, um, unlike yes like, like yesterday, unless we perhaps see some Doom drops and a lot of Roach drops, um, we should be seeing a longer game in this matchup. Uh, was it Kerr playing yesterday that was re relentless with the Dark Templar drops? I think uh, he, he was Kerr. Yeah, I, I think it was it was Kerr doing the Dark Templar drops, and yeah. then uh, uh, who was, uh, was par Paranoid? Paranoid, yeah, Paranoid. Paranoid doing those those roach drops all over the place, like those two base and three base roach drops, just completely trying to drop units in a very very sneaky play. And on such a big map, guys, drop play is a key factor to victory, in my belief. Because, uh, you know, you don't need to travel around with your, with your army. And also, your opponent is, uh, at a certain point in the game, spread out so thinly that it takes a lot of a lot of time from for his army to, to get from spot A to spot B to defend the drop. And this is why drops on such big maps just become more effective than usual. Definitely so. So right now we're seeing Sage, he's playing the defensive side, he's using that Mothership Core very well, making sure to try and push that Overlord away. He doesn't want to give information freely. Um, by pushing that Overlord away, he doesn't, or sorry, Daimaga's not going to know where exactly or when exactly the third and fourth gas is taken, which is really big indicator to when Sage is going to be aggressive. Behind this, Daimaga himself, he's droning up very heavily, and he did take that base away from his opponent as we expected. And the question is going to be, what is he going to do with this? He doesn't want to saturate it just quite yet. It's very exposed. So is he going to perhaps just try to train units from there and get it nice and defensed ready? Uh, it's a... It's like the, I think this is like a mirror for, for Sage, this is a mirror of what he did in the previous game. So instead of going Stargate and then Free Gates, he goes now Free Gates and a Stargate. 
Obviously, this is related to the fact that he didn't have the forge expand, but uh, but also I, I just wonder what is he going to utilize the Stargate for? Is it going to be for the Oracle play, or he will just go straight up for uh, a ton of Phoenixes? Phoenixes are a very mobile unit, and on big big maps, you just want to invest in as mobile army as possible. This is why Phoenixes, Blink Stalkers, all of that would just make too much sense here. And uh, and wow, Sage going for this aggression. He already no, he doesn't have any. He doesn't have any upgrades, guys, uh, because he didn't go for fast expand. I am so used to seeing Protoss go for fast expand that I forget that you normally. He can't get any up upgrades and Sage just positioning himself. What, what do you think will happen? Oh. Uh, okay, right here the Zervians oh. do have metabolic boost. This is going to become very close. The Mothership Core does need to back out. We may see a recall here in just a moment. Just simply too many Zerglings. Dimaga responded very well and it looks as though the Mothership Core is actually more concerned about getting back home and handling the counterattack as the Zealots are all taken care of. Why? I'm not really sure why the recall wasn't used. It it was like the perfect opportunity to use a recall, but perhaps Sage. Ah, now I understand. If he used recall, he wouldn't have the energy for this uh, planetary nexus, and, uh, yeah. and he needs that. So he will just catch up with the mothership core, and he will have the energy to use this big freakishly big cannon on the top of his pyramid so we will see how it goes for him for now the maga is just nibbing at the supply depot uh oh zerglings just uh, well they will just bite their way through but there's a nice force field there unfortunately you cannot you cannot repair that uh, that supply depot yeah, I think that was a little bit of a miscalculation there. The force field needed to go down sooner so that um, there's like a little bit of a double wall that supply depot is on fire and will burn to the ground. And and so far that Mothership Corps is acting uh, acting a little bit as a scout as uh, mm -hmm. the Overlord has a, you know, the same movement speed as an upgraded Overlord. And right now it doesn't feel like Sage has a good grasp on the game. Daimaga has more bases. He has a stronger economy, less diminishing returns, but Sage is going to be coming in with Void Rays to try and shut down the natural expansion. Uh, well, I'm quite sure he'll be able to deal some damage, but we need to remember that Void Rays are not as powerful against Queens as they used to be. Void Rays now do not charge with time. They, they will charge if you use the Prismatic Realignment ability, but that just adds damage versus armored units, and Queens are no... Uh, they are not armored, so uh, there is no chance of, of just getting nice Queen kills with, uh, with a Void Ray. Alright, I'm going to correct you on one thing. It's oh. not Prismatic Realignment, it's Prismatic Alignment. For ah. some reason, <laughs> we think it's been changed, so it's a realignment, yeah. but no, it's just Prismatic <laughs> Alignment. Like, I, I, I've made the same mistake like five, six times, and the, right. and the chat exploded like, You got it wrong, Crota! I'm like, oh, Holy okay, smokes. okay. That Thanks for telling me. I would never, <laughs> on, my, I'm on my own, I would never realize it. So, uh, yeah. so anyway, guys, the prismatic alignment, it, it just feels awkward, doesn't it? Saying prismatic Yeah, doesn't alignment. it? It feels like it's been changed, it's been realigned. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> it, it's, it hasn't been realigned, it's just been aligned. Yeah. Uh, Alright, but what is this? A war prism drop now happening inside the main base. Zealots, a, a wow, a force field on the ramp. And the Zealots may be able to run free here for quite a while, but look at all, all oh. of those drones. Oh, oh. Oh, and they didn't get as much free rain time, and Sage, with a very precise attack, he didn't have enough energy of the sentry to, to carry on uh, and, and stay there, because the sentry needs just a ton of energy to keep up the force field. Now, the, well, I would say that Void Rays are doing quite awesome. They they also are supported by the Mothership, but all Queens are here now, and, uh, you know, God save the Queen, uh, uh, uh. The Queen is now part of the swarm, guys. We no longer want to save her, but still, the Maga does a very good job of it. Yeah, those queens are so strong. If you told, if you said, okay, there's a, I have, I have a, a caster that can heal, that doesn't cost any gas, and can attack ground and air. You'd be like, oh my gosh, what is that amazing unit? What did they it, do with the marine? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like, oh no, it's the queen. <laughs> Oh, and now Sage is having some problems, and uh, there is only one Zealot that is stopping uh, the Maga from getting into the Protoss' main, but uh, unfortunately for the Maga, the, the Colossi got back here. So, you know, for now, it's the game seems to be going back and forth, and uh, it's pretty equal, in my opinion. 
Yeah, right now I am surprised that Daimaga isn't using the Hydralis on creep, getting a really, really large creep spread. The sheer size of the map should be a, a sign for Zerg to utilize their speed. The Void Rays are at, and the Mothership Core are going to completely shut down this base here at the 9 o'clock position. And with enough energy on a recall, there's no real danger whatsoever. Just destroy the hatchery and get the exactly. heck out of there. Exactly right. And oh yeah, they are getting prepared for the recall as soon as this goes down. And the recall... There is no recall. No Shit. recall. They are just microwing extremely well. Oh, Mothership Core may get taken down. Oh and, no! Oh, the, the Voidways are now stuck on the wrong side of the map in a corner. Oh. And that is going to be painful if, unless uh, Sage is able to somehow find an opening, and I believe there are a number of openings, since the Queens do not have a strong creep highway. Why Why didn't Sage use the recoil? I, I don't know. I, I'm just under the impression that Sage hasn't practiced yet enough with the Mothership Core. The, the recoil would be a perfect call in that situation. Yeah, the, the only player that I've seen use Recall extremely effectively has been Grubby, and that's just because he's had years and years of practice with Town Portal, so he, he <laughs> knows how to use it. And everyone else is like, what is this move all of my units for free? I don't understand. <laughs> there must be some hidden string attached, you know? <laughs> how much does it cost? What do I lose? No, you don't lose anything. You just need to click on your Nexus, goddammit. Um, but you know, uh, I think players will get better and better with that because it's such a, a good ability. And I saw Mana doing it, I think, uh, two days ago when I was casting Mana. And Mana was doing it oh so good. He, he would just go for a nice Blink Stalker all-in, support that with the Mothership Core, so it would be a later all-in. But, uh, but eventually he would just recall them as soon as things get fishy. Yeah, right now you can see Sage, he knows that these Void Rays are stuck, but he's doing very, very strong calculations. He's waiting for the shields to regenerate on these Void Rays before trying to press out again. Oh, this could be bad. There are a whole bunch of Spore Crawlers there. Oh. One goes down, and it looks like they will be able to sneak out. Daimaga uh, getting um, getting a little bit lucky there at Sage, not... Or, sorry, uh, or, yeah, Damaga, not, uh, Sage not paying attention, but at least the Void Rays are free. Oh and Sage God, can do regroup his army. <laughs> do you see the, this March of Freedom here? Is it like oh. the, the, the 4th of July or what? Oh, yeah, it's the million, million Zergling March across the center. Wait, oh, what is the Queens? I, wow! Is, yeah, exactly what I was saying. So the Queens will be here to heal the Ultras, and uh, the Maga is... <laughs> I don't know how how this will end, but I am so excited to see it, to be honest. Well, what I'm surprised about is there's no overlords to start spreading creeps so that the queens can lay down creep tumors. This is going to be huge. The queens are still just making their way out. Ultralis, so much splash damage pushing in now. Force field's not doing a thing. And now what's going to be happening next? Oh, I, I, you know, he's just trying trying to get through here, but Sage made a very smart call of placing some buildings that will, of course, delay this, this march, and we already have Queens placing creep. This is exactly what we want, but then Queen needs to be wary if they don't want to go down uh, being taken down by the Colossi, and the, the, oh, the force fields don't do too much, because the, the Ultras are out front, and they just, uh, they just trample over they just trample over the force fields, but then we already had like four of them being taken down and, and the Zerglings are in the background not really used. I'm not really sure how to feel about this. This is a very strange push coming out of the Maga. Yeah, this is really strange. The Colossi with so much range, no Corruptors on the field, and I think that's really the problem. Ultralists are good, but they cannot get within range, and especially with seven Void Rays and that Prismatic Alignment, so much damage to be had taking down those Void Rays even with their six armor. Yeah, and the Queens are just running back and forth, but uh, uh, no, they will be just evacuating, and no! Oh, holy smokes! The, oh, the worm just got destroyed, and there is no escape tunnel for them. So many Queens with so high energy will just be destroyed by this huge Protoss ball, and, uh, and Sage is looking strong right now. Even though the Maga had a great idea with this push, I think what he was lacking is either A, 
um, swarm host to lay down the siege. At least five, six of them would help a lot. And oh, again, the ultras out of the position, nearly being killed. Uh, a lot of zerglings paid for that mistake. And then now the maga goes in, tries to defend, but it's it's probably his last living mo moment in this game. The mothership goes down. But the rest of the units, oh, oh, is that so? The ground army of the Protoss just got taken down by the mass of Queens and Ultras. And there's just a couple of Voidrays left, all of that being picked. When you're fighting on creep, this is a completely different story. The same unit mix is like, you know, two, two times as more effective. Yeah, it's being able to chase those Colossi and other oh, Colossi now running on creep. This is looking very good. No, the Voidrays able to come back once more. Ultralis with six armor um, pretty much nullifies this pr this prismatic alignment attack. So it's only 10 damage per attack, attack of about 0.6. So it's about uh, 18 damage a second, um, based upon my wild math. So yeah. 18 damage a second, <laughs> and yeah. so it's, it takes about like maybe five seconds for those void rays in mass numbers to take down an Ultralis if those queens aren't there healing. Yeah, and you know, queen healing, if you're going for ul for ultras in the late game, it's pretty much mandatory. You don't need as many queens as the Maga does. He's just experimenting with with some new stuff. Uh, but you still need some queens to, to support the ultras. They take so long to build. They have a lot of health pool. So you just want to keep them alive, naturally. Yeah, and one of the biggest benefits of queens that a lot of players forget about is that they don't utilize larva. Oh, what is this? I think we have a drop inside the main base, and it's a repeat of what we saw just moments ago. And it looks like the main hive may get taken down. Oh, Ten zealots no. coming in, but it's a, becoming a base race as we now see Ultral is pushing in on the fourth base. Who's going to take more damage? Oh, I, I, in base race scenarios, I always beat for the Zerg because he just can, you know, expand more easily. But then the Hive doesn't get targeted. Why was that? They go after the infestation pit. I think we have just lost control over this base trade. And as soon as Sage realized, okay, I need to defend my fourth base, uh, he just stopped uh, microing his Zealots properly. And now we only have the refocus and the Zealots start to dab the, their psionic blades into this, uh, this huge Hive cluster. All right, so I, I don't know. This is all just very, very strange. Both sides fighting Colossi with extreme range, being able to take down so many Ultralists. And those Colossi are just roasting and toasting everything. Queen's now trying to mass transfuse, but it's not enough as the front door is going to break, but there's just too much of a counter wave coming in from Sage. The Hive has been taken down and pretty much all, the, all a lot of the tech has been removed. Actually, not that much. The Hydralis, Viper, and Roach, the only things unable to be trained at this point. Yeah, um, I always wonder why don't people go for a Hive, hive at their natural inside of their main, because the main is usually the target for all the drops, and you could just have the natural being more resistant, and the natural usually falls as the last expansion in this game. It, it's one of those, wherever the main building is, that's where the drop is going to be sometimes. So they're like, you know what, if, if they're going to commit, I might as well have them commit in the very, very far corner and far reaches if I can, you know, clean that up just a little That's bit also better. true. You know, the Maga right now trying to attack again from this angle, but Sage has walled off so nicely. He's, uh, by the way, this this complete wall, of, if we check the minimap, we, we have like this red line running across the map. This is how good Sage is at walling off, and he uses the extra gateways. He will always need the extra gateways, everyone does, and he, Sage just uses that as a wall and a way of delaying his opponent, and this works so well for him. Now we have another attempt, the Colossi are on their way, oh there are 6 of 5 or 6 of them, supported by so many Archons, this is looking crazy, and oh the Maga feels the blood right now, he thinks that he may take it, but will he? Oh, not enough surface damage. The queens are blocking the way for a lot of ultras now. Only now the rest of them just started eating every Protoss force that they have on their way. But will that be enough? It seems no. Two ultras have to retreat alongside with the queens being healed all the times. But a bunch of angry zealots is chasing them down. All right, those queens now need to head back. They can't make it inside the Nidus Worm. It looks like that will get taken down with absolutely no problem. Daimaga's expansion attempt here at the 8 o'clock position has been cancelled. New Nidus were making its way in as well. And Daimaga is just trying to, I think, 
Siege Sage in. If Daimaga can get up another base, he should be fine. Um, you can take a look at the losses. Daimaga has lost more, but he can establish up a better expansion. And I think right now, if Daimaga had utilized Swarm Hosts, it would force yeah. Sage to come out and fight. That's the problem. Exactly. Daimaga is always bringing the fight to Sage. If or if Sage is forced to fight Daimaga with those super, super long-range Swarm Hosts, I think this would be a different game right now. Exactly my point. This was exactly the point I was trying to make earlier. Either Swarm Hosts or maybe Vipers. Swarm Hosts or Vipers would have solved at least some of the Maga's problems. And I'm not sure that those additional Queens and, and Corruptors are adding as much value as a nice bunch of Swarm Hosts would have. And of course you could say, oh yeah, but Sage would be able to clear the waves of Swarm Hosts. Yeah, even if a couple of shots will be fired every round, that would still force Sage to go out because you just cannot afford losing your stuff for free units. And, uh, and you know, this is uh, this is what Swarm Hosts do. So I'm kind of surprised that the MAGA is not going for Swarm Hosts, but hey, you know, it's yeah, his game, not can't... ours. <laughs> it, it's right here. Oh, it looks like the Void Ray is going to get taken down here. The Corruptor should back off. What is going on? Um, yeah. A little bit of useless loss, uh, needless loss there by Daimago. Could have pulled back and saved one of those corruptors. And anyways, let's see what's happening here. Both sides. Um, Sage looks like he has a little bit of a bigger bank and a little bit of a of a stronger supply. But if you take a look at the army, Daimago has a stronger mineral army, and Sage actually has a stronger gas army. Well, by the way, uh, I, I'm just under the impression that right now Sage is trying to build the Chinese wall. He will have a wall <laughs> being walled off through the half of the freaking map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This this great wall of red, a perfect color for the great wall of Sage. Yeah. And here, and you can see that Sage has actually established this ninja expansion on the bottom right and. And with this, I think Daimaga is going to be overestimating his chances on winning. He doesn't know about it. He hasn't been properly scouting with a lot of Zerglings. And even the front door is going to be fairly difficult to break down with Photon Cannons and even more gateways. Perhaps it's the start of Great Wall of Red Part 2. And I think this will make Sage very happy that Dimaga doesn't scout her. I'm not sure why. Oh, he, we have a drop here in the natural, just Spore Crawlers being taken down. Not too much damage so far. By the way, Dimaga didn't rebuild that hype. Oh, Dimaga has just lost his spawning pool. Because what is this? He, he... Sorry, oh. because he didn't. He did not rebuild a hatchery here. Neither he did a, a creep tumor, which would just suffice. He has just lost his spawning pool and he will lose the infestation pit as well. Anyway, we have additional drops here at the third. Not doing too much damage, but still being annoyance and uh, and a nuisance for uh, for the MAGA. And it's, it's getting rough. Yeah, both of these players now, they don't want to make a mistake. The next player who makes a mistake is the, going to be the player that loses. So they're trying to figure out, okay, how can I make it so that Sage needs to attack me or Daimaga needs to attack me? That's what they're all thinking at this point. You can see also Warp Prism. Um, I'm, we are seeing start of level 2 shield upgrades. It looks like Sage is getting every upgrade under the sun. He's going to have 3-3-3 three, three, three upgrades on his ground units. And that is always impressive as the Void Rays should, could perhaps get some more upgrades as well. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just had a power sneeze. <laughs> it is one of those sneezes that, that just send your your brain flying inside of your skull. So, <laughs> forgive me that. Uh, anyway, we have the Maga repositioning himself uh, on the middle of the map. And, um, and Sage will just camp out. And like you said, Sage is going for every possible upgrade. This is what you should do at, at such a late game scenario. It doesn't cost you too much because you already have huge banks of both minerals and gas. And having additional upgrades can can just by an inch save you from death during uh, during any any type of a battle. We have another drop here uh, at the bottom base of the Maga. He's just evacuating all his drones. And the problem with having 200 supply as a Zerg is that he cannot warp in. Sorry, warp in. He cannot morph anything from the larva there to defend. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. And now he's gonna lose his spawning pool for perhaps a second time. Sage's um, zealots here are just a bit of a throwaway. 
So that's a real big victory once more. Sage has the minerals to replenish that, and oh, he's not going to be a problem. Oh, 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 Sage is moving out with the with the high Templars, and will he follow up with the rest of our uh, army? It, it seems he does, and now the Maga is definitely having a hard time making a choice. Will I go for it? Will I let me myself be baited for this attack? Or, you know, because having all the high Templars at front is most definitely a bait. It's not that Sage is bad enough to just lose them straight out, no. He's being very calculated about being very upfront with his units and uh, eventually he's hoping to get some easy kills if the Maga would pro all army at uh, trying to score the, the High Temper kills. So anyway, there's a drop on its way with uh, High Tempers and a Stalker. I'm, I'm, I will just see how it works, I guess. Uh, but you can see Sage now also just sacrificing probes in order to free up some supply. The Ultralist so rabid trying to eat on some of those probes. Zergling's gonna finish the job there. And I think Sage is gonna be doing a two-prong attack. He has this drop of High Templars and Stalkers. He also has another Warp Prism down in the bottom oh. left as a beautiful Psy Storms completely clearing out or pretty much clearing out this base here at the 9 o'clock position. Oh, and this is so uncomfortable for the Maga. Very late into the game, if you have a big army like like Sage has, there is not a single issue with just throwing a couple of High Tempers away with a Warp Prism, because that can deal a ton of damage, as we saw. There are Dark Tempers that will just destroy this newly founded expansion for the Maga, and I think he's starting to feel the pressure if he hasn't already. Yeah, right now Sage's ability to be able to warp units all across the map um, has been so strong, so good, that there's not much that Daimaga can really do. He's feeling the pressure, and oh, is the Dark Templar going to win out in the fight? Oh, oh one Zergling <laughs> left! Yay! I done it! I done it! Ha ha! I'll go tell my mama! <laughs> <laughs> All right, but a major fight now oh. in the center. Void rays, colossi, everything coming down to this. Time warp, psi storm, every spell. Void rays, archons, tempest. All we're missing is the mothership core. The queen's walking slow through that time warp, and, and I it believe seems that seems that the maga has just cleared every single ground unit. He's now left with a bunch of corruptors, which is. Uh, not so good against the Void Rays, but it seems the numbers are in his favor and Sage has just lost all of his army. In this, in, you know, he perhaps was just as focused on the drops as we are and eventually didn't manage to position himself well for the, for the you know, killing move. Alright, yeah, I am absolutely stunned right now. Daimaga has a larger mineral and gas army at this point. Um, void Rays are being trained and all Sage can really do at this point is warp in a whole bunch of zealots which do not do well against the ultralist in heart of the heart of the swarm oh here comes the attack what's gonna happen the zealous trying to flank ultralist just gonna oh. turn around oh, oh so yes. yeah but the position for ultras is just so good they have the concave they need against the the, the zealots if ultra was surrounded then it's a different story but for now it seems to be a GG and the Maga takes the game in style, guys! Wow, this has certainly been one of the best Hardware Swarm PVZs I've ever saw. Yeah, I I'm still kind of stunned up until the last three minutes. I was like, okay, uh, alright, and I think I had just forgotten how good Ultralists are against Zealots. Um, I think they actually do more than twice the amount of damage compared to, Heart yes. uh, compared to Wings of Liberty. That's so it, they it, used to do a very little damage. Well, maybe not very little, but it was like twenty. A, what? Yeah, yeah, like twenty damage mm -hmm. versus a uh, normal forty, like forty damage versus armored, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Now it's a flat forty, and ultralists were just slicing through zealots like I wouldn't believe. And the Maga has positioned himself so he wouldn't get surrounded if all those Ultras, and, and you know, Sage definitely had the numbers to surround the Ultras. If those Ultras were surrounded, that would be would have been a battle lost. But no, he positioned himself so he only attacks from the, the, the way where he has this cleave damage, and that was enough to win this battle. This has been awesome, guys. Let us just get um, uh, two or three minutes of recess, and we'll be back with you. Uh, with another game as soon as the players host it so don't go anywhere you're watching Yegois TV and if you stay till the end of this show match and perhaps the next one you will get a chance to win a Heart of the Swarm copy for yourself.
<laughs> no problem. It, no, it, it doesn't sound funny at all. I, I hear multiple languages all the time. Yes, I did. Mm. Oh no, 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 no problem at all. Enjoy, enjoy casting, enjoy being here. So let me know when you're ready. Okay, we're ready. And by the way, you haven't been muted. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, it's, no, it's... Oh, okay. Normally, you're like, okay, I'm gonna mute. We're at a commercial break. Yeah. And, no. and then all intro because I have all these things to take care of. You just wait for me. Then I was like, oh, okay, oh, I'm waiting. Yeah, I, I just forgot. Normally, I do that. I just forgot this time. Luckily, we didn't do any racist jokes. We didn't do any jokes about the Pope, so we should be pretty fine if someone tries to, to sue us for not being muted during the commercial break. <laughs> anyway, guys, here are uh, here is Sage being spawned in the bottom right position of Achillon Flats and, uh, and his opponent. His opponent Daimaga spawning as the blue Zerg on the top left hand side of the map. It is going to be a PVZ once more, nothing too out of the ordinary. And I got to say to Sage, I think, I don't think I've seen the same build from him or the same opening precisely each game. So yeah, I don't so know if far. he's making this up on the fly or does he just have like, I have 17 builds and you don't know which one I'm going to use. You know what is my theory with Koreans? I think that they just they just go and buy themselves th th this bowl of Chinese chickens, uh, not chickens, uh, cookies with uh, how, how you call that with the oracle inside. Uh, the little fortune cookie. Fortune cookies. Thank you very much for that. And uh, you know, in in those fortune cookies, it is it is said. You know, you need to go forge fast, expand, then transition into dark Tentor. Okay. And this is this is exactly how Koreans are playing, in my opinion. So right now, Sage is probably just enjoying himself some cookies, and uh, he's trying out new builds. All right, th those fortune cookies um, ha have been working pretty well for him. Sage is up two one in this series. And we'll see if whether Daimaga will be able to even up the series or if Sage will take a very commanding 3-1 to one lead. This is always, you know, game 4 and game 2 in any series is always one of the pivotal matches. Are they going to go up a lot or are they going to be able to even it up? And I'm really looking forward to what these players are going to bring to the table. Yesterday was uh, quite entertaining because first I think Paranoid was going 4-0 or 4-1. And it just seemed he will take the game number six and will be done with it. But then Kerr has been such a heavy resistance to Paranoid, and uh, you know all these things happen in uh, in best of nine series, in best of five series equally as much. Uh, it's it's all you know playing on ladder versus playing a series against a player. It's so different. Here, you not only play the game itself, you also play the player. You play on his mind because uh, you may you may taunt him with an all-in, with a cheese. Then you will go for a very safe play. You can do all sorts of things to, to throw him off balance. Yeah, it's kind of like playing rock, paper, scissors. If you just play like best out of one, you're like, okay, I, I you know what? 
I, I might just get rock, paper, scissor and build order loss. But in, in a nine game series, as you mentioned, there there's a history, there's the immediate history of like, okay, he just did this to me. Is he going to do it again? Or I saw this build. And then as soon as, you know, the scout goes away, he cancels seven gateways and then builds three stargates instead and comes at you with something completely different. Yeah, so um, so that happens. And, you know, it's it's one of the best reasons for StarCraft 2 being such a good game. And by the way, Sage has just got the confirmation that Dimaga is again going for this uh, very late gas, free base uh, style of play. Normally, I noticed that this is, I think, very specific to Dimaga because majority of the Zergs nowadays just go for the spawning pool. Sometimes they even go extractor before spawning pool to have 100 gas for metabolic boost as soon as it's possible just to prevent any pylons on the map, any aggression, but Dimaga is so confident with his own abilities that he just he just skips that. He is going uh, consciously for a very late metabolic boost speed upgrade for the Zerglings. Yeah, I, I would say it's more map situational and I don't know if it's gonna be that successful on on Achillean Waste uh, here. The uh, reason uh, being... Uh, 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 pneumatized Carapace? What? Already? Uh, yeah! What? Oh yeah, you can have pneumatized carapace before tier what tier two now. Yeah, but but you know what is he going to use that for? He will he go straight for for lair and then go drops or? or, or I, I think it's just for scouting because the the pneumatized carapace is a rather quick upgrade. Yeah. While uh, the the ventral sax is the long upgrade, so we'll see what's gonna happen here. The zealot just dancing around, apparently doing the hokey pokey with the queen, and the queen's winning winning that little fight there but um daimaga has to be careful there is a probe at the zelnaga tower to the south and if a proxy pylon comes down there could be a lot of units inside in just a moment and just a theoretical question if you place a proxy pylon here at the high ground near the zelnaga on the left uh, does it reach far enough for you to be able to warp in zealots near, near the rocks on the zerg's third I I don't know. I actually need to see from your point of view. Okay, so let's go. Okay, where exactly are you saying? Uh, I don't know if there's enough of a gap right there. Okay. Um, uh, I, I can't quite tell the spatial distance. Maybe if I like rotate the camera a bit. Yeah, yeah. anyway. Uh, uh, it Dimaga might... here. Yeah, Dimaga here with a couple of roaches and a queen defending this Zealot Warpin. And of course the pylon has been noticed. By the way, one of the major changes in how this form is that pylons no longer allow you to do warpings on higher ground. You need to have, you know, the pylon at least at the level where you want to be warping in. Yeah, I really like that decision. It's really stopped the amount of four gating that you see in Protoss versus Protoss. And it makes the warp prism that much better of a unit because the warp prism can go, you know, it's in the air, so it obviously can can go ahead and warp in. Yeah, you're exactly right. And Sage is going for some Phoenix Immortal play. So again, a, a rather fancy mix uh, out of Sage. He is being so creative. I think this is, you know, we have identified it already as being one of his major major traits in StarCraft 2, just being creative with his builds. And he can easily, easily transition from one tech to another if he just decides that okay this is the need of the moment i need to stop making immortals i will now switch to some other tech and he does it so fast and so effectively it's so nice to watch on yeah being able to have multiple production buildings multiple tech and doing that tech swap um it, it's almost a zerg like you know how zergs have multiple hatcheries and all they need to do is build one more building and then all of their hatcheries can build roaches or all of their hatcheries can build hydralis yeah. And, and they can respond. So uh, putting in a little bit of adaptability into Protoss is what we're seeing from Sage. And uh, so, you know, what what do you think that uh, right now Dimaga will go for? He is building a bunch of roaches and he's building the roach tech, but at the same time, he's investing for Zergling tech. So he's going for melee upgrade level. And oh, he's going 34 additional Zerglings. He just saw, ah, uh, I know what what is going through his mind. So he just saw the Phoenixes. And as we spoke previously, against Phoenixes, the best counter is actually some Roaches with Zerglings. Because the opponent will not have enough ground force to defend it. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I, I think I have a theory on what the Maga was actually trying to do with the Pneumatized Carapace. I think he was trying to set up a creep highway 
with the overlords right as tier two hit so that the roaches could be able to make their way down and it was actually stopped uh... by sage who went for phoenixes and he wasn't expecting that many phoenixes to shut down the air uh, so we see the chain of roaches now come in that that is very smart my friend you are my new idol uh, <laughs> the maga no right no the, the idol would be Daimaga who came up with the strategy I'm just the one trying to dissect it yeah and uh, Daimaga trying to get rid of this pylon but no he will have to go for the rock f rocks first it seems or go straight for the main entrance and there is there are so many phoenixes on the map five right now it's it's you know enough to take down queens it's enough to get rid of a ton of overlords it's enough not to mind too much of spine crawlers sorry sport crawlers yeah it's one of those strange situations where hey i have phoenixes what are you gonna do about it are you gonna go hydralis and you know, Daimaga already knows, okay, I know you have the robotics facility. If you go Hydros, I'm in trouble. As we see Zealots now dropping in over here at the rock expansion for Daimaga. This expansion might get cleaned up. And now we have another possible warp in up on the high ground as well. So really, Sage just attacking on oh. multiple fronts. And what a nice drop back to back with the expansion itself so they cannot be surrounded. The next drop is here trying to take down the evolution chamber but it will not work sadly and another run by was here at the first. So so Sage was doing a three pronged attack. It was a three pronged attack it was pretty it was pretty nice to look at but I don't know how effective it's been. It's really been the story of the Phoenixes cleaning up random drones and random overlords across the map. That's given Sage this lead right now. Yeah. Um, by the way, guys, I see a lot of people asking about this on the chat. There will be a Heart of the Swarm giveaway once we are done with this show match. So if you stay till the end of the series, you may get a chance of winning Heart of the Swarm copy. But anyway, back to the game itself. Another queen being lifted. This is this is not looking so good. Now she wishes he, she had that bowl of ice creams yesterday. She will never get a chance of getting it again. A couple of zealots trying to get past here, but no, the zerglings are too fast for them, and the spine crawlers do very well at defending it. And now it seems that Sage's drops just got shut down. But then, oh, there is potentially another one. No, Sage just lets it go. All right, so even though Sage has gotten a lot of worker kills, if you take a look at the losses, it's only a difference of about 500. So uh, it's really, it's really fairly even. Daimaga has been doing a good job mining more in terms of economy in order to keep up, and now surpassing Sage in terms of overall supply. Um, there is a stronger gas and mineral presence coming in from Sage, but then again, Daimaga has dug in his heels. He's going to be defensive and be able to push out here, and it doesn't look like we're going to have an engagement anytime soon. Both sides wanting tremendous upgrades, Zealot legs, level 2 weapons, and level 1 air weapons upgrade coming in from the Protoss. Oh, so I'm not the only one still calling it Zealot legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you know it, some old habits just stay. The Zelog legs, Zelog le ah! Zelot legs are just Zelot legs. Anyway, guys, we will be having a bunch of ultras exactly like in the last game. We also have the addition of Stargate, some Tempest to produce at the same time, and uh, a lot, a ton of upgrades. I'm not actually sure. I'm I'm so happy with that because if you do a ton of upgrades at the same time, you actually sacrifice quite a lot of gas. The best way to do upgrades is to decide on a tech path and just follow it. If you try to do too much, you end up not having done anything really well. Yeah, it's one of those things where if you're a jack of all trades, if you're able to do everything kind of well, as long as Sage is able to do something extremely well, he'll be able to win this. And right now, Daimago tried to do a, a double expand, but it looks like both of them may actually be cleaned up. Sage letting the hatchery finish before he's gonna go ahead and engage with the zealots here. Yeah, you're exactly right. And Sage trying to do another drop, which is successful, but the War Prism got killed off. And the Phoenixes continue to be an extreme annoyance and a nuisance. And the Maga, uh, the Maga is not actually extra strong with just defending at multiple fronts. He, he's usually the type of a player who focuses on his economy and then executes the battles really well. Uh, defending multi-prong attacks, not his uh, area of comfort, but hey, 
Anyway, now the Maga moving on for the assault and he will be just training base for base because Sage is now on four bases and the Maga will, sorry, five bases, now four bases and the Maga will just try to even out the odds. Alright, oh, oh, a whole bunch of queens! A beautiful, beautiful four force fields trapping queens and hallucinated Colossi to add and that is going to be perhaps a little bit of a meat shield as the Tempest will be able to do their thing since the Colossi are such a high priority target. But the, the one thing I'm afraid about is that Tempest are actually a counter for perhaps for, for Ultras, yes, and uh, and specifically for Broodlords and for, um, for Battle Cruisers. And with so many Corruptors on the map, you know, getting rid of the Tempest will be just oh so easy, but we'll see how it goes. The Ultras charge, oh there's a nice storm, but then uh, it, it, Sage has to be careful where he drops the storms and uh, the, the Corruptors are focusing everything down. And the Air Army is just crumbling at the power of the Swarm, although the Ground Army is still there and we have GG from Sage, the Maga. Claims this again, a perfect execution, even after being harassed all game, he managed to come out of, on top. That's so good. Yeah, it, I was taking a look at the fight, taking a look, and I was just like, okay, Sage is doing a lot of cute things. He's executing well, he's, he's, he's poking around, but he's not getting any lead. Daimaga was just like, you know what? You take out my drones, you take out 20 drones. I'll, I'll create 40 drones and I'll have 20 drones on top of you. There was never, there was, it, it felt like Sage was in control in terms of like having the ball, so to speak, in football. <laughs> like, I have the ball, but Daimago was just like, you know what? I'll hold the ball for five seconds and score. Yeah, and, then, exactly. and, and then you, and then you can hold the ball for another 30 minutes and I'll hold the five ball for five seconds and yeah, score. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it came down to. <laughs> exactly right. Although I think you and I would just disagree on what football is, but uh, but besides that, the idea. Is I, I did say football and not American <laughs> football, so ah. I, I was being very specific there. Well, but still, you guys call football soccer. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I, I, I don't that, know. Could you explain that, by the way? Uh, because I never got it, uh, and I'm not trying to be racist or anything right now. Just trying to find out why you call football soccer. You know what? You're you're asking you're asking the wrong wrong person. My expertise is in StarCraft and in .NET and C Sharp. Right. So and you can ask me stuff there. Just not why Americans call a soccer or football football soccer. All right. Uh, by the way, I used to be a C Sharp programmer as well. Um, probably not as good as you because it didn't turn out to be my career. But uh, I think we have even more to do with one another. Very nice. All right. Apparently, yeah. they're asking, "Are you drinking tomato juice?" No, this is guys. You know, this is a health potion. This is not tomato juice. This is a health potion, and I would love at some day to implement a lead inside that glass so it actually glows uh, on red. It would be so awesome. But uh, but besides that, yes, it is tomato juice. I hate it, but it is so good for long casting. Have you tried it? Um, I actually, for long casting, do uh, a what. Tea with honey is what I do. Oh, does it work? It it, it works. Surprisingly, ca if you drink water while casting, it yeah. dries out your throat. Exactly. You just and, feel, and people, feel so, so sore, right? Yeah, people don't know that. Water dries out your throat. So uh, tea with honey uh, works um, amazingly well. A little bit of caffeine in there. But since you're drinking so much water and, and going through so much tea, you don't get dehydrated and you stay a little bit more focused. Oh, that's nice. I always go with the tomato juice because it has a little bit of salt in it and mm -hmm. you know if you drink if you eat too much salt you you always want to drink but just enough salt just little salt just keeps your throat from being sore and that that, that is something that my great grandmother uh, sorry grandmother told me uh, because she said that uh, when she was teaching kids and he, she was sick and she couldn't speak too well, she would just drink uh, a glass of tomato juice. Back in then, that times, you, you couldn't just go and, and buy tomato juice, you would have to make your own. And she would add salt to it and, and then all, all her throat problems would be gone for, for the evening. So that's, that's a trick I picked up from, from my gra grandmother. Oh, wait, oh, I will have to try that out, but not right now because we are now in game five in this series. Um, who's going to take the lead? Uh, we do have, I believe it's Sage spawning as the red Protoss on the bottom left-hand side of the map. 
Yep, yeah, you're exactly right. And his opponent is none other than the Maga, guys. And this series is, uh, like Crota mentioned, a best of nine. Uh, at the end of best of nine, of course, the players will get their rewards, but you will also get yours for watching. So one person on the stream will get, a, well, he will become a happy owner of new copy of Heart of the Swarm, just because we love you, just because you're an awesome audience. So if you keep, if you stay and keep watching, then you just uh, have quite handsome odds of of being happy tonight. Anyway, Sage going for this uh, this pylon. I would say I would call it pylon, no, ma no matter what. <laughs> Sage doesn't a pylon, even... pylon first type of thing. Oh, is that a pylon block? Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, this is a pylon first. I I was thinking that Sage would go for a forge fast expand and just no, it's a proxy pylon. proxy gateway. Oh, Sage, you cheeky sausage. Oh, it is gonna get scouted out though, and Daimaga already coming in with an Overlord. I, I thought it would be like, you know, here's a little break. You know, we've been seeing some long macro games. This will be another nope, Pro proxy gateway. Yeah, but only one, so it's actually not as cheesy. It is still a cheese, you cannot <laughs> you cannot deny that, but it is much less cheesy, half as cheesy actually, as two proxy gates. And and by the way, this overload just sees it all, so the Maga will not be surprised. He's just now you know building more drones and waiting for the spawning pool to finish. Before the first zealot is out, it will be still still some time. And behind yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna see some chrono boost on that gateway as expected. It looks like a lot of energy is saved up back at the Nexus. We should see um, a second chrono boost come in there right about. Come on now. Oh, oh, his timing's off. There it is. So there you it is right there. It. And we are gonna have one zealot. Zerg beans will be spawning in just a moment in addition to a queen. There's those six Zerg beans. How much damage can this one zealot really hope to do? Well, eventually the drones could just hide in the minerals and, and stack, because that, that's a fancy trick, right? If you just yeah. stack in the minerals that are kind of recessed, so you, you just get a lot of drones in a single space and the zealots cannot do all that much damage. Also, targeting is an issue. So right now, I have a ton of zerglings, <laughs> considering the fact how early it is. Even further, uh, further couple on their way. A queen, but no spine crawlers. So the maga is just hoping to defend this without spine crawlers. That's 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 a very good call, by the way. Without spine crawlers, he doesn't sacrifice too many minerals, and he just has enough units to defend it. No more, than, no less. All right, that queen now has come over. Very very smart. Uh, the zealots were just gonna sit there on the ramp all day and say, "What are you gonna do about it, zerglings? What are you gonna do?" And what we are seeing is a photon cannon now. And interesting strategy as the queen now does need to back off. The queen cannot fall. It, very key in the actual production. As oh, we may see a surround oh, here and wow, a beautiful surround. And all the zealots will go down, and the cannon won't even have a chance to finish, or will it? Oh, the Zealots did take down a lot of Zerglings with them, and the cannon finishes, it is being surrounded very smartly, so they cannot uh, just, just walk at it from different angles, and right now it is being more and more difficult for the Maga, even though he has reacted almost perfectly. Alright, so what's this? Oh, the Pro purposely positioning himself to try to limit the surface area, and it looks like one Photon Cannon will go down, the second Photon Cannon looks like it will go down, and all interestingly enough, we are we are actually seeing on 18 probes versus 13 dro 13 drones, so the economic advantage still belongs to Sage at this point, even though he is going to be losing a lot here. No, but he has oh. lost too many minerals with this all, and uh, he has lost his tech. He didn't have any production facilities back at home, and eventually just decides, okay, this is it. Sage is uh, Sage is not one of the players who would be beating about the bush for too long. If I lost, then I lost. I I, I wouldn't stay in this game because I don't really believe I can win it. That's yeah, d d yeah, definitely. He was just like, you know what? I I, I tried something risky. It didn't work. Let's move on to game six. So, All right, so, I need to grab something real fast. I'll be right back. Okay. So anyway, guys, um, if you also want to grab something really fast, stay till the end of this show match, and we'll be giving out a free Heart of the Swarm copy for the viewers. That's just because we love you. You need to follow us, of course, in order to be... Uh, in order to be considered, but hey, you know, it's uh, probably not asking too much. Uh, just one click doesn't cost you anything. A Heart of the Swarm copy is... 
probably 30 bucks saved in your pocket, so uh, why not? We'll be going for a short commercial break, we'll be back in 3 minutes as soon as the game is loaded. Hello, I, I actually need to get something to drink. It was just like all that talk of tomato juice and honey with tea and all that. So it's like, ugh, my throat's kind of dry. You sounded like you had a baining stuck in your throat. That's never good. Yeah. At any point, that baining's gonna pop and just melt my vocal cords. Well, I, I would prefer that than it popping on the other end, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, either way, it's painful. It's painful. Yeah. So anyway, guys, we're we're now back with the game number six, if I'm not mistaken, and the Maga is leading 3-0. And uh, if you just joined, and let let me just uh, introduce the players here. Spawning at the top position of the map is Root Sage. Meanwhile, on the bottom position of the map here on Antigua Shipyard, in blue, we have the Maga as the Zerg. So Zerg versus Protoss once more. And, and you know, we talked about the mind games and are you going to go macro or cheese or whatnot. And, and we saw that in game five where Sage was like, you know what, I'm going to go pylon first outside your front door and completely mess with you. Yeah, that, that was so, very cheesy and it just didn't work out. Yeah, I, I think the timings just didn't work. He, he was forced to warp in another pylon. And after that, he didn't get his Zealots back in time. Just simply too many Zerglings. If those Zealots, um, you know, decided to stay closer to the ram, they would have been much, much better. Yeah. Um. <laughs> why make spikes? <laughs> yeah, why indeed? Why do we make spikes? Yeah, th those NA server, the NA server that I frequent has been down a lot recently so yep. even going through the heart of the swarm campaign i'm not getting any of my achievements 
Oh, that's so bad. I, I'm such an achievement hunter. I always yeah. hunt for all achievements in games. I'm one of the, you know, when I was playing World of Warcraft, it was actually a killer because uh, I, I would go out, out of my way just to get extra achievements. I think I was even uh, one of the people who had the Lore Master achievement for completing all the quests in World of Warcraft, even before it got easier with the launch of Cataclysm. So uh, so I then decided it's best not to play World of Warcraft. <laughs> it's so it's so addicting. Anyway, we're back into the game now. Uh yeah. Seems everything is more or less fine. Even though the maga says he's ha he has spikes. I I think he's doing quite well, don't you think? Yeah, I think he's I think he's doing quite well. Um I accidentally dropped the pencil and it paused the game and I didn't know it was me. So um we'll see what's going to be happening here. The maga is setting up going for a spawning pool, then his hatchery. He's looking pretty good. Sage, on the other hand, um, building the front door at the ramp, you know, on Antigua Shipyard, you do have two options for your front door, either exactly. at the very, at the front or closer to your nexus and having your, your nexus as part of the wall off. Um, a little bit of pros and cons in each of those scenarios. And Sage deciding the front door variation better against their mother. Well, so perhaps we should describe those advantages for, for our viewers. So let me go first with the wall of here, new the Nexus. The advantage of that, it is a much shorter wall of, and you just place a pylon, then a gateway, and, uh, and then perhaps a cannon here next to the Nexus to seal it off. And every single Zerging that, that wants to be annoying would have to go all around the Nexus while your cannon is shooting at it. And uh, you know it's it's quite awesome. Although later the game goes, it gets even worse because uh, because then you don't have any any high ground advantage when you start any encounters, and and you know then you would just wish you went for this uh, this wall off here. Yeah, that that front door wall off, and um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to get up the ramp. You're also the Zerg player is walking into a bit of an un unknown unless they have an overlord there, which one photon cannon is sure to protect against. And at some point, Daimaga will have to back off with this overlord that's sitting up on that high ground as it will get shot down. Yeah. And so far, we see pretty standard play. Daimaga going for three bases sometime around, I believe, the four minute mark. Um, that's pretty standard there. Still no gas. Perhaps we'll be getting a lot of queens and it's going to be up to Sage to figure out what his strategy will be to harass. Yeah, and uh, I'm, right now I'm, I'm just sitting with my hands behind the back, nearly literally, and waiting for what will Sage do this game. Every single game so far he has done something different. This is such a good quality in a player. Yeah, definitely, but one thing that I don't agree with, he's currently supply blocked at 36 over 36, he forgot a pylon, and he's not training any additional probes, so that may come back to haunt him as Damaga right now running on three bases and will be able to just continue to work her up a lot more, freeing up supply by creating extractors. Yeah, the Maga already a couple of workers ahead, which is quite usual for the Zerg, but uh, but as you said, being supply blocked at the early stage of the game, it is never good. It always ripples throughout the whole game because, you know, you are kind of late with a worker, then you are kind of late with the minerals you need for your tech, then you are kind of late with the, with the army, and all of those mismatched timings just keep adding up, and eventually you, you will even end up being one minute late total behind your enemy. Yeah, but it looks as though Sage is actually going for a two base all in. You can take a look at his main base. It's sitting at 16 over 24 workers. Yes. This is the highest, highest efficiency in terms of minerals, um, probes per mineral patch. Yeah. And we are perhaps going to be seeing that momentarily here at the natural. You can see multiple gateways, four gateways, and a warp prism coming in. I would have assumed that it would have been an immortal, so it may be a sentry. Warp Sentry prism drop? drop? Yeah, it's it looks like so. But then for an all-in, by the way, this is not too many gateways. I, you know, when you go for an all-in, you would go at least with six or seven gateways, and uh, and then some additional tech. Oh, a guardian shield pop! Did you see that? Oh, I saw that. It was just for a split second, and that's a lot of energy wasted. He's got to be upset with himself. Um, Sage is going for one one upgrades, and he's also going for a robotics bay. So maybe he's going for a gateway push with Colossi 
as and then hoping to use sentries to corral units instead of immortals that would be that would be rather interesting well it may just be one of the very precise build orders of sage because after that he may just continue producing workers because and and it seems he does so he has just got back to producing workers after he has prepared his drop with with the sentries and now he regrets oh my god i have used up all the energy i don't have enough force fields but still, even if you make such a critical mistake, you probably need to carry on with your drop because otherwise you will lose a huge opportunity and this has dealt some damage. Six workers killed is not all that bad. Yeah, six workers killed. You can take a look at the total losses. 225 more for Daimaga at this point. But Daimaga is on more bases. You can see 15 workers at his third, 16 at his natural, 16 in his main. No gas whatsoever in his main though, and it's really going to come down to what Sage's follow-up plan is going to be. He does have Colossi training with extended thermal lance range, and two Colossi, two 1-1 one, one Colossi at this early stage in the game may catch Demaga off guard. Yeah, and, uh, and the build order of Sage is just something I see for the first time in my life. Only for gateways, a robot switch to Colossi with a sentry drop? That's uh, that's quite unusual, I would say. That, that is very unusual. It's only going to be two Colossi, and he's got to do a ton of damage with this attack. If he if he does anything short of taking down the third, oh, he is way, out there, of this there game. Is, there is a, not a sentry, a, a stalker drop here in the main of the Maga, but he defends that easily with Roaches, he only loses two Overlords, I believe. Yeah, I don't know, 500... I, I don't know if Sage is doing enough damage, he's being very aggressive. Daimaga, on the other hand, is just being very very calculated and saying, you know what, I got my Zerg engine going, what do you have? And it's, it's really gonna come down to that. Oh, free, uh, I don't like this, free force fields wasted for two roaches? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you kind of go and ask yourself a question, but why? And, uh, uh, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I think Sage at this point knows that he needs to attack with everything. He has three Colossi, any time that he can get a unit, and you can see Daimaga now trying to meet and greet this. Is it going to work? The Colossi are here, the roaches need to get away, that is not good. And a beautiful set of force fields again. Oh. And Daimaga might actually be in trouble. The amount of splash damage coming in, especially with the third Colossi coming in. Are we going to get enough force fields? Daimaga trying to split his forces, but he realizes that fighting off creep not, creep not the best idea ever. And he will now try to, to attack from two different angles, I believe. Try to get some nice surround, but no, that's made impossible by those nice force fields. And even though they, they, they don't catch too many Zergs inside, there are still a very good defense and uh, Sage is building up his army on the front while fighting and this is looking so impressive. Yeah, this is looking really good. You can see that Sage's army much larger in terms of gas. Daimaga is deceptively large because he is in those supply ineffective roaches, mass roaches and a lot oh. of workers. Those roaches are not able to engage and more reinforcements still coming in. This is looking so strong even though Sage is down by 70 supply. And, oh my god, yes you're right, in fact 70 supply down, being only on two bases, and the Maga has a superior army, so he may still claim this, but he would need to go for an effective trade, or even if not effective, then at least, you know, <laughs> half effective, because right now he's just losing all of his roaches, and he's losing the advantage he has, he has to go for some nice engagement, and perhaps he was just too easy on the sentries and oh by the way did you notice how many sentries there are 11 sentries are on the map this is why sage is able to afford so many force fields yeah we, we were talking about how he wasted energy earlier but this is looking so strong right now the colossi have been so well protected and there's nothing the roaches can really do about it queens are now trying to get in zealots are getting able to push their way forward and the colossi with so much splash damage I believe Sage is going to take this, being down 70 supply at one point. Yeah, that, that's amazing, but with this perfect positional play, Sage takes the game, claims the victory, and plants the American flag, sorry, the Korean flag, in uh, near, you know, near Demaga's house in Ukraine. 
So, uh, wow, with being so down with the supply, he just didn't care. With 11 sentries, he was able to keep on and on and on doing force fields, and that, alongside with Colossi support, hey, it was just enough to beat the army that Demaga had to throw at him. Alright, so what are we up? What are we now? T all tied up, three games apiece, now going into game seven? Yes, game number so seven will be. Coming our way, we'll be going into a short break, give us 3 minutes guys, let the players catch some breath and um, and us catch some breath and we'll be back with another amazing match. By the way, tonight's lineup is just amazing. Dimaga, Sage, then we'll be having Cass and Nurtio, oh my god. Alright, we're starting with the next game now, and uh, before we go, I just wanted to remind you that we are very keen on leaving the lobby, just as Dimaga is. <laughs> Let me just re-invite him back, he probably just disconnected. Um, so anyway, um, what I wanted to remind you is uh, that we are very keen on hearing from you about what you think about our cast. Me and Krota are trying to do our best. To, um, to get better in, in casting and with the game knowledge, with our abilities and all of that. So if you could go to Team Liquid, to our stream thread, I will drop the link in a second. And if you could drop your feedback, your honest thoughts about how we are doing, it would be so awesome. Every two weeks we'll be giving out a free hard with ROM copy for people who drop their feedback. Not to everyone, but uh, one random person of that. Uh, but anyway, you know, if you just uh, feel like it, Go, go there and, uh, and, and, and help us become better casters. And the game is starting. <laughs> this is a question, did someone win yet? We already given out six copies so far just this week. After every single show match that we do and uh, well there's a ton of occasions that are just described by this beautiful picture you'll be able to look at the next break. Uh, here is all the ways that you can win a Heart of the Strong copy for you. Just just follow us and that's it. Anyway, back to the game itself guys. Uh, here he is spawning in the bottom right corner. His name is Demaga and he's playing feverishly blue zerg. And Krota is away from keyboard. Anyway, um, so uh, let's sorry, I was muted. Ah, right. One of the rare occasions when people just talk to themselves. 
Yeah, I was talking to myself. Okay, so Sage is on the top left-hand side of the map as the red Protoss. My apologies for uh, being muted. I, I gave an awesome introduction, and then I got all flustered, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happens to the best. Sage right now, uh, he will not be going for any shenanigans. He just goes for this pylon here, and it will be placed alongside with perhaps Forge, perhaps a gateway nowadays, we just don't know. Uh, and it, by the way, I love that fact that you can just go and do a gateway, a sort of a forge fast expand, but instead of a forge you would just go for gateway first and then defend with the mothership core. It's, it's awesome that the game is now giving you so many options to start to start with and, you know, open economically. Now, from the other side, the Maga is most likely going for a 14 pool and... Uh, no, no, oh, he's not. By the way, is he? He, he is. He is, sorry. I, I was just, you know, wondering where, where is he with the pool. He was kind of late with a couple of minerals and uh, I got confused. So anyway, uh, the Maga is not a perfectionist and it works still in his favor. Now, uh, will he show us exactly the same style of being gasless and taking three bases? I think so, because that seems to be the style of play he's the most comfortable with. Yeah, and also on a map like this, it's, it's fairly easy to try and go uh, three bases gasless. The creep tumors you can kind of spread over there. There's common choke points to get units over quickly. And with this, I am surprised that Sage actually went Nexus before Forge this time around. Yeah. And Daimaga is going to spot this. So is Daimaga going to train the typical 2-4 to four Zerglings? Or is he going to come over with 6 and 8 and try to punish Sage for being a little bit more greedy than most other Protoss? On this map, it's kind of hard because the distance between the two bases, if you check, you know, the bases on the map are just so small. And that's because the running distance between all those bases is just so long that it would take ages for the Zergings to reach the opponent's base. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's my personal theory. Probably someone has came up with exact calculations about this, but uh, this is uh, this is how far how my intellect goes. Uh, all right, so we are going double queens. It doesn't look like oh yeah, it's just the standard four zerglings. Um, three looking, one looking for any proxy pylons. Three more about to test that front door. They're gonna get there just in time to see a gateway come down. They'll they'll knock on the gateway, but. Not much is going to happen. Gateway cancel, Cybernetic score come in, and Sage now gets back to work. Yep, yeah, you're exactly correct. And uh, Andy Maga going for the free base play without any gas. So he'll be droning up heavily uh, before he goes for any tech transition, before he decides what he wants to do in this game. It is a very flexible style and it allows you to get out with a couple of expansions very quickly and rather safely, uh, but then what it requires of you is very precise scouting. So if the Maga at any point would just not get enough good reads on the, what Sage is, is doing and what Sage is opting for, then the Maga would be screwed because he's in a, such a vulnerable spot without any scouting information. All right, let's see what's gonna be happening here. So far, Overlord just in position, both players just sitting inside their base. Um, I'm pretty happy to play a, a macro game after the short cheese game and the, and I guess the longer macro games in games four and five. Yeah. I'm still kind of curious as to what Sage's choice will be. Will he be going in for those Phoenixes again, which did do a lot of harassment but couldn't win him the game, or if he's he gonna try to do that uh, crazy Colossus build that we saw earlier? Well, that crazy Colossus build... Oh, by the way, we have a Stargate, so I think our questions and doubts have been answered with Sage going for Stargate Plate. And I'm I'm just curious what sort of Stargate Plate this is going to be, because he has shown us at least a couple varieties over the last couple of days. So, um, so hey, uh, <laughs> would you care to venture for any bets about this, or uh, do you have any, pr any predictions? Um, my prediction would be, what, Phoenixes and then Oracle, or Oracle and then Phoenixes. Uh, but once again, the Sage constantly confusing me, following up a, a Stargate with one Phoenix and then a quickly throwing down a robotics facility. 
and it looks like Sage is more going for adapt um, adaptability. Mm -hmm. Adaptability. He does not want to get caught off guard, perhaps by roaches, and he wants to perhaps get an observer and some immortals out as well. And by the way, it seems the Maga will be going for that Overlord Highway. He will be, sorry, Creep Highway, because he's also going for the Pneumatized Scarface. And, uh, you know, the Maga, one of the players who wants to experiment with the new stuff, he's not too um, conservative. He wants to try it out. And Pneumatized Scarface in Tier 1, why not? And we will see how he goes for the Overlord Highway. It will help him. And, uh, you know, that's also a sign of an aggression alongside with this uh, this macro hatchery yeah you can see a very good saturation at each of the bases 15 18 16 not very many diminishing returns the overlord and and i like this play daimaga by getting the pneumatized carapace he actually saves an overlord he's able to scout out the main base and and take a good look around inside without really sacrificing the overlord there and that is an actual huge huge savings as you know zergs need a lot of overlords yeah you're exactly right with saying that now phoenixes do take care of that and again i think we'll be seeing the maga style of play with the overlord highway being cancelled by the uh, you know by the presence of the phoenixes but but uh, well is is the maga already switching yes he is so as soon as he saw his first overlord being taken down he went immediately for six spar spore crawlers to defend this and um, and that's it but then he's still also going to lose two queens yeah just very very unfortunate those four phoenixes the question is going to be how much damage can they do it oftentimes the overlords just can't um, or the phoenixes just can't do enough damage you got to remember they're expensive units 150 min minerals 100 gas each so each each what para phoenixes need to kill five overlords in order for it to be quote unquote resource worth it yeah the maga was trying to pick at the front of sage's base but sage is too good to fall for that so uh, those earnings only had a taste of how the shields work how the shields taste and now they just need to be backing away but they were not on hold and actually only a second of hesitation out of Sage saves those Zergins a couple of force fields and the Zergin would have been trapped in a giant spoon. Yeah, this is all looking very, very interesting by Sage. Uh, this was a two base sentry immortal Phoenix push and the Phoenixes are really denying a lot of the scouting. The Zergins did scout this out though, so that's why we're seeing so many units come in from Daimaga now. And it's going to be oh. up to Daimaga to respond to this as we already have a mothership core this is not an all-in the mothership core is there to pull the units back just in case things go awry and how are things gonna work out is the question oh a couple of nice force fields uh, you know if one second earlier but one second earlier perhaps they would just catch a lot of the zergs army but for now they 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 have just created some sort of a, an energy arc, not too useful. And a Guardian Shield pops the Zerg, try to move in. Nice set of force fields, letting the Roaches one by one. Most of them don't even know how to fire for such a long distance. They just spit in front of their feet. And it seems that Sage will be taking this again. Every engagement that we see Sage taking is just so precisely executed. And this time is no different. Even throwing away on another another time warp and eventually picks the game so sage leading four against three a very even series yeah very very nice play there i i was kind of concerned about sage I was wondering what he was really doing with those phoenixes and perhaps he knows sage's build about that creep highway as soon as the phoenixes were out in the air you instantaneously saw Damaga go, you know what, okay, I need two spore crawlers at each base to protect my bases. And as any good Zerg player knows, every time you build a spore crawler or any building, you sacrifice a drone. So Damaga then built 12 drones behind that. Yeah. Well, with all of those larvae gone, Sage was able to push out with a very, very effective army and take the victory. And by the way, against such army, if you have if you have zealots, you have sentries, you have immortals, the most effective unit combination that is not used so frequently is actually going for hydras, hydras and zerglings. That is so freakishly good against that. 
But anyway, I also see a lot of hope in the swarm host. People just don't utilize them yet. But I mean, there is such huge potential in Heart of the Swarm of uh, of becoming this completely different game. Right now, we see a lot of strategies used from Wings of Liberty or just kind of adjusted to Heart of the Swarm. But I think instead of being this this uh, evolution of build orders and all of that, it will become a revolution at certain point as soon as players start to utilize the new units even more. Definitely. So what what map choice is left for um, Dimaga at this point? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't been keeping track of all the maps. Let me just paste them. Uh, let me just paste them all the available maps. Uh, Give me a second. Was Daybreak already played? Uh, I think it was. Anyway, we'll be back in a second, guys. Here are all the ways of how you can become a new happy owner of Heart of the Swarm. You just need to follow us on Twitch. If you want to increase your odds, go on and follow us on YouTube, on Twitter, and on Facebook. We'll be giving out copies there too. So, uh, hey, we're trying to make this the best game week that's, that's possible just after Heart of the Swarm launches.
Alright guys, so we're in the lobby now, we'll be starting the game in a second. Um, I just wanted to ask you, Krota, are you having fun with those show, show matches? I am having a lot of fun with the show matches. I'm, I just don't know how to say the name of this map. Muspelheim. Muspelheim. Yeah, that's, All right. that's how I read it. I mean, it's my own interpretation. <laughs> All right. It can as, as easily be Muspelheim, Mispelheim, Muspelheim, whatever, you know? <laughs> Exactly. It's always different. Like you put different accents on different words and on different letters, and everyone's just like, "No, you're saying it wrong." Like, yeah, I know I'm saying it wrong. The one thing I know for certain is that zealot is a zealot, not a zealot. Zealot. And Dimaga, thank you for everyone harping on me in the chat channel. Dimaga, I'm still. I go back and forth between Dimaga and Dimaga. I don't know why. <laughs> I think he wants to be called Dimaga. Um, the reason for that is I I'm also from sort of Eastern Europe, and uh, and this is usually the way it is spelled here. You know, you usually accented that way as opposed to Dimaga. Dimaga. All right. Well, it is going to be Dimaga versus Sage here on Muspelheim, and Dimaga has spawned as the blue zerg here in the bottom right hand side of the map. And his opponent is none other than the ass-kicking, the perfectionist, the guy who always plays differently and yet knows what he's doing very well. He is Sage from Root Gaming. All right, so Sage versus Dimaga and Muspelheim. What do you? What can you tell me about this map? This is the first time I've actually cast oh. a game on this map. Ha! <laughs> Um, with your uh, with your experience so broad, I, I actually f feel kind of proud that I know something that you don't. But hey, enough, <laughs> enough of being overjoyed. Now, Muspelheim is a weird map, and this is why I like seeing games on it. So to start with, the third base is one very similar to GSL Whirlwind. It has an extremely easy access from the sides, but then most of it is just guarded by this huge cliff. Then uh, another part of this map is we have a ton of bushes all around and it has a feature similar to Daybreak with the destruct destructible rocks that become a part of the wall for some part of the game and after that you can just destroy them and move out with your army. Mm, very nice. So what type of gameplay do you expect to see here? Do you expect aggression? Do you expect macro? Um, how, are, how long are the games normally on Moose Behind? Um, the games usually fit below the 20 minute mark from my experience, uh, but I have been only casting a couple of cups with that, so uh, I probably have cast like 30 games of Muspelheim, not, you know, it's not a ton, it's not as many as Daybreak. I have saw a huge preference going towards Mutas on this map, the reason for that being is there is a ton of airspace behind the bases and you just have so much room to maneuver and, and thus the mutas become a very st strong and viable way of playing also for the from the proto side of things blink stalkers always awesome there is even an arrow here pointing that hey you can blink into my base so uh, so yeah this is more or less how most behind works all right so we are going to see seeing a forward fast expansion here so nothing too out of the ordinary yet mutalis um, i don't know if dimaga wants to go mutalis because he's been seeing sage open up with Stargate so often and coming out with those phoenixes it's perhaps um, a safe build for Sage knowing knowing that he can go ahead and utilize phoenixes to both shut down um, near 20 minutes? Uh, I think that the Maga right now is trying to talk about his network performance and he's just asking for a short break so um, in the meanwhile um, perhaps um, would you mind perhaps giving me some thoughts, your thoughts on my casting? Perhaps the viewers would mind, uh, would not mind giving some thoughts on my casting um, in the meanwhile as we wait. Uh, you know what? I have I have no qualms with your with your casting. And um, personally, I'm still trying to uh, work with you in terms of: Are you wanting to be play by play, or do you want to be color and analysis? Sh um, should I talk more so you can formulate your thoughts? And, and that's really what good synergy is with, mm -hmm. with co-casting. So I know you're working on uh, on your English in, term English in addition to all of that. So I applaud you for trying to do so many things at once. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll get there anyway. Uh, I'm quite sure of that. And and also, um, I think that that for now we we have started doing uh, a much much better than we did in the start, uh, because then there there was a lot of stumbling, <laughs> and and we would interrupt one another. Nowadays, it seems much better, and that probably is because you are so pro and just don't interrupt me. <laughs> That, no, like there's sometimes it's good to interrupt. So let's. Well, wait. Look, it looks like uh, they're uh, going. Are they ready? Oh, I can't talk to them. So if you want to talk, you want to tell them we're ready. Sure. Sorry. Nope. Hey, uh, it, Sage uh, may be uh, gone. The maga has paused the game, so he needs to. Oh, wait. Okay. Resumed. Yeah. All right, so we're now in the game. Thank you for all the kind opinions on the chat. Um, the, the reason why I am asking for feedback so often is I'm just so focused on improving right now. It's, it's like building from ground up uh, when you switch languages, so uh, it's okay. Anyway, back to the game itself, I guess. Uh, we have the Maga going for a double expansion, quite normal for him, and exactly no gases so far. So, uh, at the opposing side of the map, we have Sage, who has, as you said previously, went for a Forge Pass expand. And on this map, the, the rock feature is very nice, because you can just destroy them later on, instead of destroying your own buildings, like you do on maps like Antigua Shipyard, if you go for a full wall off. Yeah, a very nice play. Also, I like the cute play by Sage. Sage was in danger of losing one of his probes, so he actually sent out a probe, and, and he mineral pathed it so that it would walk through the others and then like get like stop the other circling. So that's why you see one probe with down to five hit points now happily mining away, somehow holding those minerals in whatever uh, however probes hold minerals. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> the only concern I have is this gap in in the wall of the Protoss. The, this is something that is much bigger, bigger and wider than just one zealot to to be mm -hmm. a cork for. Yeah, you can probably put another pylon right there, like right up, right next to the other one, and then that will be that little narrow walkway that you want to make sure that zerglings and roaches have to, you know, line up in a single file line, like they're coming off from school and and you know trying to head inside to have some fun. But we'll see what's going to be happening there. So far. Uh, the Imaga is still doing, just now establishing up his gas, and really playing the economic game that we expected to see from him. Yeah, you're exactly right, and uh, and now, like you said, establishing gas, going for gas in his natural base, this is kind of interesting. Um, I'm not sure what is the reason behind that, perhaps he's just hoping to get scouted, and if you see two gases in the natural, you, you, you just kind of expect that there are already two gases in the main. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things where, like, what do you want to show your opponent? In in StarCraft, at this level of play, there's also the, I'm going to tip my hand to you just a little bit, and are you going to kind of look at my hand and go, hmm, I think he's doing this. That's always key. Right now, once more, we see a Stargate and a robotics facility come in together. So Sage, really liking this Phoenix, uh, this Phoenix Colossus or Phoenix Immortal opening, and if if it oh, works for Sage once. He got supply blocked again. This is not good for Sage. You know, all his builds are really creative, but the supply blocks happen just far too frequently, if you ask me. Yeah, it's all about figuring out these timings. What's good about Sage's build is they're creative, and they're often very effective, but he doesn't have the time to really hone them down and know at this precise second, I need to start building a pylon Otherwise, I will be supply blocked like he is once more and now just starting his pylon again. Yeah, and Evolution Chamber doing their research in the background and also the Maga going for this hatchery. So I believe that the Maga will just be going for a full frontal assault with Zerglings and Roaches as we saw previously. Then perhaps again switch to the Ultras. Yeah, this is interesting to note. Getting up that macro hatch, uh, the, the only reason why you would want a macro hatch at this point is obviously you need more larva. If you need more larva on three bases, it generally means you're building those lower tier units that don't cost as much. And just as you mentioned, Zerglings and Roaches perhaps going to be the units of choice. And with only Immortals, no splash damage coming out. Sage may be caught off guard at the sheer number of units that Dimaga has. It's going to come down to Sentry Force Fields. So, as we see all these games, we kind of also um, 
get some impressions on the emerging meta game of Heart of the Swarm, just as the MAGA got the confirmation that will that there will be some airplay from uh, from the Protoss, he just went for mass zerglings and roaches because it seems to be the most effective way to counter them. Anyway, there's a nice flyby by the, by a couple of. Uh, GG well played, no, sorry, Mr. Observer, you have been wrong. <laughs> Sage. Sage is just taking this additional queen here and... Uh, yeah, not too much. <laughs> Mestru is always... I, I know Mestru personally, he's always a guy who, uh, you know, does, uh, does social faux pas. But hey. <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing so hard I can't talk about what's happening, so I, I hope your camera angles are good to explain yeah. what's going on. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I hope. So anyway, uh, Sage now just moving out to his third base and uh, he will be trying to secure it, but, you know, as we know Sage, first off he will just start building this great Chinese wall here. And, and you know what, I don't even know if the Chinese wall is going to come into play right now. Uh, let's take a look at the probes. Yeah, the probe saturation, 14 and 16. There's no more probes being trained. This is essentially an all-in attempt, since he is not trying to establish up a third base behind this. If, so if, why, if why, this is... why is he placing those two pylons? Is that for aesthetics? I, you know what, I, I don't know. I think it's maybe a follow-up play, but he's not going to be able to saturate that third base uh, very quickly. Um, we're gonna see this attack come here, or perhaps oh. he shot down the Overlord in terms of a head fake to make it look like he was taking a third? Maybe, it, it may be so, you know, everything can be happening right now in the mind of Sage. He's preparing himself to go in and he has this War Prism which will be serving as a mobile pylon. Now a ton of Phoenixes support that, but oh, the Force Fields were just too late! And he's full out on creep, surrounded by all the roaches and all the zerglings. And oh, this is not looking good for Sage. Even a ton of, a ton of force fields still persisting. But the, the Protoss army is just crumbling here, being constantly surrounded and, and nipped at by the zerg. I think that that the Maga has just claimed a victory here. Yeah, the Maga actually found the right timing, attacked from the the back, from the front. Force Fields just a split second late, being down one second, and now you take a look at the income, 56 drones versus 43 probes, and Sage not, or now finally is starting up probe production once more, no real way of establishing this third, and all Sage can really hope to do is cause harassment so that Daimaga doesn't attack. And Daimaga really nicely, he saw that there was, a, there was a war prism, so he backs away with a group of roaches and he splits his army, and the rest of his army will just be making sure that there is no third base. If he manages to keep the, 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 the Protoss on two bases only, that would be awesome enough to win the game, and in the background I can easily expect Daimaga go for an expansion, and he does exactly that as we speak. So the Maga, you know, he has secured himself some lead in the game, and he's just trying to translate that into even better, better lead. Yeah, so, so far 74 drones, 43 probes, army sizes in terms of in terms of overall size, Protoss is still larger. And the problem is that there's a lot of phoenixes, and these phoenixes are are kind of expensive harassment units that aren't really gonna be able to win in the game. Perhaps just contain his opponent. Sage now backing off here, those phoenixes, uh, what are they, like, uh, 1500 resources in phoenixes that da can't attack the ground unless they have energy. Yeah, and the Dimaga being very tenacious here with all those roaches and zerglings on the third base of, uh, of Sage, and Sage just now will be able to take the, this third base, but then it can easily provoke aggression from Dimaga. Alright, so what is the follow-up play? We see a lot of Zerglings and Corruptors being added. That macro hatch from Dimaga, um, very important in being able to create the number of units that we can just massively see on the map right now. Uh, pylons may get taken down, no. Two force fields trap a couple of Zerglings as we see Dimaga establishing up his fourth. But what is this? Sage does have a probe ready to warp in a pylon and stop all mining if it's not caught. 
Well, um, well, Sage is still clinging to this game, but uh, but considering the supply lead of the Maga and the presence around the map, which is key aspect, if the Maga would allow Sage to take this third, if, if the Maga wouldn't be as relentless with uh, with his attacks on the third, then you know Sage would probably just get back to the game. He's he's good enough. To do a thing of that sort. Now the Maga just reading that perfectly. Oh, not the best engagement. The force fields are just perfect. Two force fields delay the whole Zerging army by a considerable while. And now the Protoss is surrounded. The Zealots are not doing enough damage. But hey, Stalker shooting from the background. And now just the Maga catching up with the Roaches. That should be enough to get rid of the nasty Protosses, don't you think? Yeah, it should be. The Corruptors should be casting Corruption, finishing up the rest of the Immortals. Once they are all gone, and um, this is going to be the end, and there's the GG. We are now going... Is this game 9? Yes, this will be the game number 9, and will be just in the nick of time. So anyway, guys, uh, let us go and host the game. We'll be back with you in... Three minutes those are three fingers that means three minutes after the last game is up we'll be giving away a free heart of the swarm copy for the viewers so please stay watching us if you want to participate it's just lovely to receive a free heart of the swarm so why not There are some questions on the chat, so what show match will be next? The next show match will be the awesome Nerd Show versus Cass. And oh, this is actually for me the show match of the week, Nerd Show versus Cass. Even though we had some crazy games uh, throughout the whole week, Nerd Show versus Cass for me is going to be the killer. And, you know, the sugar on top for all these, these great games we had. And if, by the way, if there are any any more questions just let us know uh, we'll of course answer them and in the meanwhile i think the game is about to start the map is going to be the new kirk precinct and uh, 
I already asked one native speaker about that. Could you please explain explain me the difference between precinct and district? And I think we just pretty much said there is no there is no difference. It's just like region and territory. It's it like well, it's a, an area of land, and that's that's all it is. And that's the trick. Um, so, <laughs> I think the Jack attack, that's uh, my usual co-caster, he was actually trying to do the research and he checked all the locations, uh, he checked if, if there was any rich gas geysers, he checked pretty much every possible difference on the map between the precinct and district and it's all just the same, it's just a different name. Alright, maybe one's for like, oh, what is, okay, I gotta talk about this, we can't talk about the name of the yep. map, because Sage oh. is already moving out with a probe. Oh. oh, Sage, so sick. And this is the last game, so he is betting everything for for this uh, for this probe. If, if this doesn't work, oh. Yeah, th this is rather risky, but at the same time, the um, the Maga needs to set up, a, send out an Overlord and scout at this out. He will be able to do exactly that here. But what is going to happen? Are we going to see a forge? Everything coming down to a very, very risky maneuver by Sage. Game nine in a best of nine. Yes, and <laughs> normally you do things like this in game number one, not game number nine. And oh, the Maga already sees this. And he thinks, oh, you sneaky bastard, I'm going to show you. Now, the previous game, the Maga has been kind of perfect, defending that he didn't have any trouble at all. Maybe with that one cannon, but that was a very unexpected development of the situation. I mm -hmm. think he, sh he should, you know, he should handle the situation quite fine. Yeah, I, I think um, Dimaga is going to be very, very strong in this situation. We're going to see one zealot. We're going to see the same same things unfold that we saw in the previous uh, time that he tried to do this. And it's all going to come down to whether or not Sage learned his lesson about having his zealots venture too far out onto the creep. If he doesn't get those zealots surrounded, then he would have returned home with a stronger economy since he did have more probes than his opponent at that time as Dimaga was forced to train up a lot of Zerglings. And Sage is now just being annoying with this probe, but being annoying doesn't kill off your opponent. It, it won't make Dimaga go, okay, GG, go go ahead, take your money. <laughs> or take Yegwen's money. Uh, no, you know, being annoying is just being annoying. And, and right now, Dimaga has the perfect chance, and oh my god, he will surround the Zealot. No, it was so close. Uh, but anyway, the previous game, exactly the same thing happened. You know, if you, if you have your Zealots to deep within the creep, the, the Zerglings are just too easy to surround you with uh, with some nice nibbing claws. Alright, um, what's important to keep track of, 16 probes versus 13 drones. As long as Sage can hold this location, he should be fine. There is a second oh. pylon now down, but there's that queen, so this is an exact replica of what happened in the previous game. The problem is that queen cannot engage off of creep. Um, it needs a creep tumor, it needs to do something, and the way the map is situated, the Zealots can actually hold the ramp a little bit better as a second Photon Cannon now comes in. Alright, no. is Metabolic Boost being researched? No, it is now transitioning into Roaches, as we are now 18 probes to 14 drones. And oh, the Maga just cancelled that creep tumor at the last second, the Zealots would have got it, and, and that small fact would have been a great loss in this match. Wait, if you cancel the creep tumor, does it no, does so the energy he, go back to the Zerg? He he was going to place a creep tumor and then just saw that the zealots are oh. coming and at the last instant he clicked to move back or stop. So, you know, oh. he, he just he just forbade himself from making that mistake. Anyway, the zealots are just surrounding the, the cannons. They, they cannot stay too long in the range of the queens, and uh, the queens are doing an extremely good job making even more creep. The creep is critical for defending this, and there are enough zerglings, and the maga is just making roaches at this point. Oh, oh. Alright, those ooh, zergli, zealots now backing off. That's going to be a beautiful fall back there. Three photon cannons. And if you guys notice, he also took down the un unbuildable bricks, but with creep now finally spreading down, uh, this this hold may not be able to do very much for very oh, much longer. Is, we see roaches. So 
Oh, this is, yeah, this is definitely tense. We are seeing a sentry. Where is that mothership core? The mothership core could be huge and instrumental in stopping some of the roaches and perhaps casting a time warp on the ramp. Yes, but then the mothership core in this situation with two queens out wouldn't survive all that long. So also Sage has to be wary about where he invests his money. So he has a nice contain right now and going in for the kill gets one zealot. He do he doesn't want to get over eager with this attack. He knows that you know he knows how to wager his odds. He's making more roaches and for now he's just building his advantage in the base of Sage. There is nothing so that the only thing that Sage is doing right now anyway it doesn't matter. The Zergings go in and they they surround the zealots the, the the roaches go straight after the cannon they perhaps should go after the pylon but hey anyway it doesn't matter it will be all cleared out and it seems that the maga just claiming this victory although it's being quite close because many roaches have been damaged badly yeah i was waiting for that force field to come in from sage to split the army it didn't happen if if half of the roaches were stuck on the mm -hmm. high portion of the ramp it would have been a completely different game a split second difference and this is what's costing sage now also not having that mothership core not having sight onto the high ground to know when they were venturing forth was a huge huge issue and all those angry roaches now making their way across the nuclear precinct and uh, you know my gut feeling tells me that sage doesn't have enough to defend it but I think that I saw one game with very similar odds that was eventually defended, so we will see. Yeah, th this is going to be a lot of roaches coming in. The Mothership Core is a bit too far. There's the force field. That one is in time. Oh, and, and the, there's a pylon block, so the Immortal cannot go out. Oh my god, this is so bad for Sage right now. He's only started making the pylons. Oh, this Immortal will be so late. Oh, being supply block hurts so much, but the Mothership Core is there. It is going to be able to get off some easy, easy kills. What is that Mothership Core going to do? It's just going to stick around, try to get some shots, make sure that these roaches do not stick around for far too long. And that may be enough getting in a little bit of damage as the Dimaga will be forced to retreat, return home, but still with a fairly large victory. Oh, oh! oh. Uh, but, 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 but by the way, at the top of the map we had a ninja expansion that has been cancelled by Sage for no apparent reason and he just places a pylon right now. Will he go for for Dark Tempers perhaps? I mean, right now this game, you know, every everything that we know about the meta game, about transition, it all goes to shambles because from now on it's just a wild ride. Yeah, it's a wild ride. I can't predict what's going to happen. It looks like Dimago wants to establish that creep highway. He's going to be able to do so pretty freely. There's an observer now on the field, and one immortal does get taken down. The Roach is going after the second immortal, or the immortal unable to do so. And Dimaga forced to retreat and return back home. But what is this proxy pylon doing at the far north side of the, of the map? It is just to confuse the casters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hate it when, when players are like, you know what, I'm going to just confuse the casters and, and build something that has absolutely no impact on the game whatsoever. Yeah, Sage is so good that he, he no longer does builds that confuse the opposing player, he also does some confusion to the casters, so they don't have such an easy job. So anyway, right now the Maga getting back home, uh, a ton of spine crawlers there, and hey, he's on two bases, he's in a very comfortable spot, now what he will transition into? Um, at this point he needs to get up his expansion, he needs to play defensively while harassing. He's not going to win the game by uh, just winning this outright, and oh what is this, there may be a force field on the ramp, no not in time, oh. the sentries oh. uh, don't make it. And I believe that was just a bad pathing by Sage. Sage got too close um, and revealed his warp prism too early. If he came across yes. the center portion, got the force field down, two sentries plus reinforcements from a warp prism and an immortal would have just done terrible, terrible damage. Yes, and uh, and oh, there's a spore crawler. So Dimaga has asked himself a question. Okay, so if I lose this, how am I going to lose? And you know, one of the answers would be you are going to lose because of Dark Tempers. So he just went 
uh, to prevent that type of a play from happening, he went for a spore crawler. That's actually something very subtle and extremely smart. Yeah, definitely. You always want to make sure that there's no way your opponent can get back in the game. And if your opponent is Protoss, generally the way they get back in the game is Dark Templar or Air Harassment. Both of which Spore Crawlers are very effective at dealing with. But Dimaga now coming in with 8 Mutalists and with 10 total. And with 2 more on the way, there is going to be a dozen and... I don't know, Mutalist versus Sentries, who do you think's gonna win? <laughs> yeah, oh, a hard bet. I'm not sure who should I bet on. Of course, the Mutas, guys, the Mutas are just so powerful. The Sentries are a great addition to your army because they give Guardian Shield and that just saves you from one bounce of the Mutalist damage. But if you have only sentries, then it's not enough DPS to start taking down the mutas. And the, the, you know the planetary nexus has been activated. We also have the phoenixes who try to do as much damage as they can, but one of them gets caught. And the second one probably will follow in a second. By the way, nice micro from the of the phoenixes from Sage. But uh, is it enough? Oh, the mutas are getting clumped, so it's more difficult to focus them. But Sage does a very good job of that anyway, and it seems that he will just be able to deal with that aggression from Dimaga. Yeah, that was a beautiful play by Sage to get the Photon Overcharge on both of the Nexus. The Nexus each have a, each have a very, very heavy range on that attack. And now the Phoenixes are just cleaning up the rest of the Mutalis and we are about even and in terms of supply, 80 to 86. Yeah, and that, that's so surprising, guys. <laughs> right now, this is looking like more or less standard game, uh, but if we go back in time and we think about how it started with the proxy gate and cannons and everything, it's, it's, it's just nearly impossible to believe that this has started as a cheese. Right now, this is a standard mid-game. Yeah, this is, a, this is exactly right. Um, a lot of the times players want to see where you are at the game, but in StarCraft it also matters how you get there. And how we got here is not your typical opening, and I, I believe the player's timings may even be a little bit off. Not quite sure how to deal with, um, you know, how to deal with the certain timings, what they expect from certain units, when Dark Templars will be coming in, when third bases should be established. All of this, they're kind of making on, on the fly. And between Sage and Dimaga, I think, the, uh, excuse me, Sage is the better one at improvising strategies. Yes, that's that's so true, but then Dimaga is just a more solid player and, and a better patient player, I would say. And now yeah. the Corruptors are just trying to pick the, the, the Phoenixes, but Phoenixes are a very fast unit, so even though one goes down, most of them just go away, get away, and they will regenerate shields after that. No problem at all, Dimaga moving our Oh, th this is again something I really like. Just a couple of Roaches, eight of them, to run around the map and check for hidden stuff. And he may actually find this, this pylon that we hate, and we don't know what it was for, uh, in the first place and he will just destroy the pylon and we will become happy casters again Yeah, so no more crazy pylon off to the north um, Sage, I don't know if you noticed he built a fleet beacon and then canceled it So I I am just wondering what um, Sage is doing He's building tech buildings canceling building tech buildings canceling and all he's doing is giving us casters something to talk about as we scratch our heads Yeah, you know <laughs> we This is this is, this is exactly why uh, people just grow bold over time. This is why Justin Bowder is bold, because he has been scratching his head on what players do for too long. So we need to avoid this type of situations uh, as best as we can. Now, we have a ton of Zergings, uh, and also we have the Pathogen Glance upgrade from, uh, from the Zerg, so we'll be having a transition into a Zerging Infestor army, it seems. Alright, so Infestor is something that we haven't seen that often in Heart of the Swarm. It's not like Infestors got all altogether that much weaker. Uh, actually, the missile attack on... Okay, no, never mind. They got they got bug or nerfed in two ways. The fungal growth is now a missile, so it's a little bit dodgeable. And also, Infested Terrans no longer get weapons and armor upgrades. So they don't get stronger and stronger like your Roaches and Hydralis. Uh, are, are you are you good? Did you did yes, you drink I, too much I, tomato I, juice? I, I just nearly choked. <clears throat> there, there was a banging in my drink, but hey, <clears throat> oh, I got the bastard. Now I All assimilated right. his essence, and it will make me even stronger. Sorry for that, guys. Sorry so much. 
Um, so where are we at? <coughs> right now we're just seeing Dimaga retreat back and this is going to turn to an east versus west battle. This is often what happens in Newkirk City and anything that Sage try or yeah, Sage tries to do, Dimaga is going to be very very aware of it. He sees everything that's happening on the map with all of these creep tumors. He doesn't even need to scout since he has buildings um, burrowed buildings all over the place and all Sage can do is hallucinate units in hopes of um, you know, getting a little bit of scouting and getting units out of position. There you once more Demaga burrowing um, drones. Those small little plays that start to add up over time and make sure you minimize your losses. Yep, and uh, now the Phoenixes, like you said, Sa Sage just can move around with the Phoenixes, try to harass some, but he is having extreme difficulties with establishing additional bases. Now this one should not be too hard on him, this one is very close to his uh, to his bird, so it's it's quite okay to defend it. But but you know, talking about the top expansions, it's nearly close to impossible right now for Sage to go there and expand. Yeah, right there, you can see burrowed zerglings in two of the three possible spawning locations. Gonna be rather difficult for Sage to even try to take those. And with Ultralis now on the field, um, Ultralis zerglings. And it's going to be going up against Immortals, and I'm surprised that um, Sage has the right counter units. I was going to say Sage needs Colossi to deal with all of the Zerglings and the Roaches, but with Immortals on the field, or with Ultralis on the field, and a fair number of them, the Immortals should be able to fight that off pretty well. Nine Immortals versus um, six Ultra or soon to be six Ultralis. And after seeing that there are so many Immortals on the map, the Maga right now is going for Greater Spire to go to Broodlords. And that's, I think, the best transition he can go for now, right now. Um, you know, in my opinion, when you're facing an endgame army, you should always go for Viper. And, I, you know, you can quote me on that, because one year from now, every Zerg will be using at least two or three Vipers in his army just to dismantle the opponent's forces. But for now, that's not the case, so hey, it's just me babbling. Uh, but Sage, uh, Sage is just building this Chinese wall again. Yeah, you can see the red wall is starting here at the center, what I'll say, center 7 o'clock location. And the, the Maga needs to figure out what his perfect composition of units are. He's getting 3-3 three, three upgrades for the ground melee. I don't believe he's actually getting uh, the, the range upgrades, no. So the roaches will be beefy but not have that much damage. Sage also building another wall off to the north, so he's gonna <laughs> essentially have a giant wall going across the map, making it difficult for Zerglings and and those Ultralists to get in there. Uh, yeah. who, who won the map with the last great wall of Sage? Was it uh, was It, it, it Dimaga? was Dimaga, yes, it was Dimaga. Dimaga is even better than Chinggis Han. It has, it, he most definitely has that blood somewhere in his ancestors and he improved on their DNA strain so he mutated even further and he's able to deal with any sort of walls. Now, uh, just a couple of losses here, a cannon, a pylon, uh, just forcing the, the, the Protoss army to move around, not to become too stale and, uh, and, and that's that. So we see, we, we just see camping from both of the sides and you know, Again, let's remind ourselves that this has started as a very unstandard cheesy game with a proxy gateway and right now is, is just a nice and tense endgame scenario. Yeah, definitely, definitely tense. You can see 10, count them, 10 High Templar ready to go. So any slow moving units uh, will get caught in that psionic storm. Ultralist with 3, 5 upgrades and armor of 6. And that means that Zealots and Stalkers essentially are, aren't doing much damage at all. It's going to be down to those Immortals oh, and those Archons. Oh, and oh, a beautiful oh. fungal growth. Yeah, go on. Oh, beautiful fungal growth followed by a whole, whole bunch of High Templar Immortals. However, getting a lot of protection from those High Templars, making sure. And right now, I believe those Psy Storms are just kind of baiting the units. What I would want to see, though, is all of the High Templars feedbacking the Queens and then not having the necessary escort to heal up all of those Ultralists. Ultralists um, getting a lot of life from that transfusion. Oh, and Sage swings around, so he wants to get a surround and not allow uh, the Maga to get reinforcements. Just cut his path in half. 
But oh oh oh, a fungal on the high templars that is not very beneficial, guys. This is going to be horrible for Sage. He has just lost most of them. He he just spawned so many, you know, so many storms in one spot that that is far from being effective. And the Maga is chewing through that a perfect situation for him to engage a critical mistake for Sage just having these high tempers because they are such a slow moving unit you need to be careful where they are in relation to the rest of your army position all right i just gotta say this there are seven void rays being trained right now and somehow sage know this and he's going for 21 corruptors oh oh holy smokes so where are all the where are all the stockades yeah, that, I, I was just like, that, that can't be right. There can't be seven void rays. There are seven void rays being trained right now, and Sage somehow knows, and he's going for 21 corruptors. So we are going into Protoss air, and this is going to be a bloody battle for air superiority. Uh, but then I need to ask you, why why are we going for void ray instead of uh, instead of the tempest? The Tempest is a natural killer for destroying Broodlords. It does, I think, bonus 50 damage to, to massive units, flying units, so it's a natural choice when facing Broodlords. Uh, I, I think he's more... I think Tage is more concerned about the Corruptors. The Corruptors mm -hmm. uh, are simply going to be able to get in there. Since the Tempests are massive, the Corruptors deal bonus damage. Add in Corruption, add in the fact that the Maga has already started the air weapons upgrades. The, um, Sage needs to be able to handle the Corruptors first. Alright, and you know, the Maga just moves in for the kill, or maybe not a kill, just as much damage as he can hope for. In the background, Sage is trying to do these relentless drops, but they don't work anymore. The Maga is all around the map. He has a nice creep, two more uh, spread around the map, so he can easily get whatever he wants. And oh, engaging with so many Void Rays. Will this work? A nice fungal on at least half of them. Oh my god. And now the Maga in retreat because he realized, oh, holy smokes, I may not have enough units. But then, oh, all the Void Rays are clamped up. And another beautiful fungal. This is not going to work for Sage if he continues to clamp his units so much. And the Corruptors now will be just shredding the Void Rays apart. The the Brutals are nearly dead, but they will survive. Well, the Corruptor count is dropping rapidly, but so, so is the Void Ray count. Eventually, it turns out the Void Rays were just enough high in numbers to survive that all. Even with the Superior Fungals, still the Maga has lost most of his air superiority. Yeah, those Void Rays being able to attack while moving, also being able to chase those Broodlords as they're on the run. Both of that very, very critical as the Void Rays take to the skies. But the problem is going to be those upgrades. As we see more and more upgrades on those Corruptors, on those Broodlords, those Void Rays are not going to be dealing that much damage. Void Rays attack quickly, but don't um, don't deal a high amount of damage, so armor is very, very effective against them. Yeah, and, and uh, like you said, there are just so many Void Rays right now. The Maga went to counter that. He just went for Mutas, but oh, Storms, but the Storms hit Void Rays as well. You can't have too much of that, but then most of the Mutas die off, so why would he care? And eventually, it seems that Sage is starting, is he is starting to dismantle the Maga. Yeah, you can see how effective those Void Rays are. The Void Rays were the perfect call as he knew that the Maga was going to be just pushed out far too far out in the middle of the field. And anytime a Zerg player needs to run with his tier 3 units, if you have faster units, you're just going to destroy it. And I believe Sage is going to take um, this base and perhaps another base. And, and I don't know if the Maga is going to be able to get back into this. Those Void Rays could just tear apart all of the static defense and then zealots could start running in i'm not even sure what would be the best defense for it after you get so many void rays and high temper support from the ground uh it's it's just so difficult to get them destroyed now queens may be an idea be because on queens you don't get the bonus upgrade uh, damage but then there are just you know there are archons there are zealots on the ground everything chases down the zerg army and the maga is on his all fours trying to get up but it it just looks so much not in favor of him 
Yeah, somehow Sage and this massive seven star gate, seven void ray army is gonna come out ahead. We are now pushing into the natural, and from there, there's the GG. Yes, we have a GG, and Sage takes the series 5 4. It has been an extremely close series, and for those of you that were saying that Sage, oh yeah, he's going to win it easily. No, it, he wasn't. Dimaga is probably going to be one of the best uh, Heart of the Swarm players of the upcoming months, from what we have just seen in those games. Yeah, that, that was just, that was a, a very impressive play um, coming in from both of those players. Dimaga somehow suspecting Sage going for going for Void Rays, going for Protoss Air, and he was like, you know what, I'm gonna build 21 Corruptors. 21 Corruptors, that, that's a lot of Corruptors. And somehow it was, Sage was like, you know what, I'm gonna build seven Stargates. Yeah. And and push with Void Rays. And with that yeah. much production, um, I, I, I don't think Dimaga was expecting it. Dimaga probably was thinking, you know what, you probably have like three Stargates, and you were saving these very tricky Sage. No, no, no. I, I built, I built in seven at a time. What are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly right. And and perhaps Corruptor is not the best answer for Void Rays. Maybe if he had mixed uh, Corruptors alongside with uh, with some Mutas, that would work. But hey, we will never find out unless these guys are willing to do a resume from replay feature right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think they do. They already played uh, nine games in a row, so uh, they're probably quite tired. Anyway, um, I would like to. You, you're you're going to work now, right? Yeah, I, I'm go. I'm, I'm going to work, going to lunch, and then, uh, yeah, I'll I will be watching some MLG this afternoon. Oh yeah, MLG this weekend, so awesome. So anyway, thank you for coming. Thank you in aiding me. Um, I'll just carry on casting myself all this all this uh, evening. But uh, you know, having your support for these nine hard enduring games was just uh, superior. So thank you, thank you for showing up. Thank you for having me. All right, so take good care Crota. Guys, we'll be back with you in three minutes after a short break. There will be going um, a Heart of the Swarm giveaway, so don't go anywhere. You have a chance, if you're watching this, you have a chance of getting a free Heart of the Swarm copy. No cost, just free. Uh, we're throwing them left and right just to celebrate them, the launch of Heart of the Swarm. So anyway, stay tuned and we'll be back in three minutes.